a single letter, just one out of 26, but maybe the most iconic letter on Earth. It's the S on Superman's chest, the symbol of truth, of justice, the symbol of everything that's right with the world. But something's wrong. It's not red on a field of gold and blue. It's black, black on black. The sentinel and protector, the man of steel, Superman. Floating still and weightless, his all black uniform stark against the sky. The sad sound of tolling bells takes us down to Metropolis, deserted. No traffic? no people. Superman glides through the canyons of skyscrapers as the voice of Wonder Woman could be heard from the great cathedral, its spires reaching to the sky as a colossal crowd of thousands upon thousands of citizens look upward at Superman descending gently. Justice. Truth. Peace. The words themselves are so simple, the concept so pure. Stained glass lit up the cathedral as Superman entered, walking down the long central aisle past the mourners, all heads bowed, row after row to the front. And there they are, the Justice League, the world's heroes, all mourning in black. Where is justice, we ask? when in the battle for peace, the mightiest among us has fallen? Where is the truth when such terrible things befall those we love? Faces turn away, profiles, costumes, insignia. Even in glimpses they are known. Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Aquaman, The Flash, The Martian Manhunter, all there. All except for the Batman. A coffin in a somber amber light. Could it be? We know that forces of darkness will always threaten this planet. And we know that to fight them will take all of our powers. But we also know, those of us that come from different lands, different worlds, we know where truth lies where peace can be found, where justice is. We know because he taught us. It is in the human heart. As Wonder Woman's eulogy ends, the superheroes carry the casket on their shoulders, feeling the weight, the burden. People are silent lining the streets as far as the eyes can see to the gravesite, Surrounded by seven solemn black-clad heroes, the casket is lowered into the ground. Two days ago, the world is at peace. The sun shines brightly down on Central City, where Detective Barry Allen and his wife Iris walk hand in hand towards a restaurant with a brash neon sign, Planet Krypton. Don't you ever get tired of this place? Come on, it makes me laugh. And anyway, I'm starving. What else is new? They push the revolving doors into Planet Krypton, a big, busy nationwide chain restaurant, upscale family dining with a superhero theme. Walls lined with reproductions of capes, masks, weapons, and artifacts. The staff are all in costume. Green Lantern waiters pass Wonder Woman waitresses. Aquaman busboys clean tables. A Martian manhunter tends the bar. As Barry drags a reluctant Iris, he doesn't notice a Batman waiter weaving through tables carrying a full tray of drinks. Barry's elbow hits the tray and gravity takes over. All six glasses overturn, soda going everywhere. If not for Barry Allen, which at impossible speed would grab the tray, catching the glasses and managing to refill each one before a drop touches the ground. He calmly hands the refilled tray back to the waiter. Barry. Yeah, I know, I know. He pulls her to a booth. 
a waiter in an ill-fitting Flash costume steps up, oversized menus in hand. Hi, I'm the Flash, and I'm going to be your server today. Hunger can't run from me. Hi there, Flash. I will have, let's see, two Crypto Burger platters, both Superman-sized and a large Wonder Slaw. Plus, let's go ahead and add an Aquaman. Just a sandwich, but with extra tartar sauce. Ooh, and coffee. The waiter stares. Barry shrugs. Fast metabolism. I'll have the chicken Caesar. And Flash, make it quick, will ya? Ha! Funny. Never heard that one. The waiter then ambles off to put in their orders. Slowly. Wally's coming in tonight. Sissy says he's all excited about working in the lab. But Barry's not listening. His attention is on the flat screen TV over the bar. A news broadcast. Barry! On the monitor, Wonder Woman stands in front of the UN General Assembly. Those of us who come from different worlds, we know how hard it is to choose peace. War, conflict, they are easy. It is peace that is hard. Sorry, honey, it's just Wonder Woman is addressing the UN. What is it with you and her? Wonder Woman, just look at her. I mean, that is one aptly named superhero. You know what I mean? What? Above the restaurant, through the clouds and into the upper atmosphere is where a sleek, silicone black satellite drifts impassively over the planet. Sinister. Aggressive. This is Brother Eye. Its glass len irises open and glows red. And far, far below beneath the Earth's surface is the Batcave. Brother I, begin metahuman status scan. Subject, the Flash. He is at the console of the massive computer system with a 10-foot video monitor. He is unshaven, feet up, watching, always watching. On the screen, an infrared image. Barry and Iris Allen at planet Krypton. Next to the video feed, a readout scrolls down the left side of the screen. Everything you could ever want to know about the Flash. His identity, location, associates, his powers. And at the bottom, a subfile titled Weaknesses. The Flash. Status inactive. Continue all subject scan. Affirmative scanning. The satellite image roves with blinding speed to find Metropolis. The city's Centennial Park. Brother Eye flash zooms closer and closer until it can see Clark Kent. The glasses, the carefully parted hair, eating a paper bag lunch on a park bench. A kid tugs at his kite stuck in a tree. Clark purses his lips and blows. The gust of wind freeing the kite while almost pulling the kid off his feet. Location, powers, status. Superman, inactive. A whirr of the computer searches for Green Lantern, in uniform, demonstrating his powers for a bunch of first graders in a school classroom. He holds a kid's drawing of a unicorn on a cloud, and with his power ring, he brings it to life. Green and three-dimensional, the kid's mouths hang open in wonder. Location, powers, status. Green Lantern. Active. Non-operational. Next is Wonder Woman at the United Nations. Wonder Woman. Active. Non-operational. Then to Denver, Colorado. The satellite sweeps the city. The Martian Manhunter. Scanning. But with the shuffle of feet behind him, Batman reacts. Paranoid. Terminate. The screen instantly goes black as a figure steps out of the shadows. It's Alfred, his butler, his friend. All quiet, Master Bruce. Too quiet. Well, world peace has a way of doing that. Maybe it's time we started thinking of things as promising, dare we say? Peace isn't a promise, Alfred. It's an intermission. A threat. <sighs> Point noted. Still, crime is down to a mere nuisance. City is generally quiet. And the sun does shine, sir. So I've heard. All your time down here in the dark, monitoring them. Some might say you've become somewhat... Paranoid. Alfred shrugs. What if something happens? 
They're not human, none of them, not fully. And with their powers, if not me, who's gonna watch them? You see what I'm saying? I believe you're saying what if, sir. Alfred was finally able to crack a smile onto Bruce's face. <laughs> Sun's shining, huh? Yes, and your guests are waiting. My guests? Uh, your surprise birthday party, sir? Oh, that. Surprise! Ben <sighs> inside as he gets to his feet. He heads for the elevator, followed by Alfred. As the doors slide closed, the blackened monitor screens blinks once before a burst of code rushed across the screen. Numbers, letters, zeros and ones. Words gradually coalesce. Creator directive override. Batman and Alfred in a well-rehearsed ritual remove the bat suit. The mask pulled back to reveal Bruce Wayne. Upstairs of Wayne Manor is a packed party. Rooms full of the world leaders, players and stars, business and military. Europe, Asia, Saudi Arabia, the Fortune 500, decadence. People lounging on sofas huddled in whispering groups. Rock stars dueling on guitars to the delight of a gaggle of supermodels. A Saudi prince bowing to a Japanese sumo wrestler. An Asian businessman, an Arab sheik, a Navy admiral, a diplomat in a Seville row suit. Movers, shakers. But in the middle is the best dressed, best looking man in the mansion. A circle of beautiful women on his thrall. Take a look around and tell me what you see. We've got princes, members of parliament, admirals, oil men, media moguls, the best and brightest, and the most beautiful creatures of God's green earth. By which I mean me, of course. <laughs> the crowd laughs from above, but below, Brother I is still running, running itself. Creator protocols inoperative. Intercept activated. Subject Alpha located. The Brother Eye Cam digitally zooms, step by step, closer and closer, descending down to find one single man. Detective John Jones, dressed in a blue suit and tie, the perfect cop, driving his unmarked police Ford. Target identified. The Martian Manhunter. Auto attack sequence initiated. Stand by. Back upstairs, Maxwell Lord continues to command his audience, the most powerful people on earth hanging on to his every word. Even with everything I've got, my telecom interests, my little real estate empire, my restaurant chains, those two alone could buy and sell me a dozen times over. Maxwell points at two CEOs, shaking hands. When I look around, you want to know what I see? I see three and a half billion years. Three and a half billion years of life on this planet. Nature relentlessly pursuing perfection across eons of time. Punishing the weak. Rewarding the strong. All for one single reason. So we could come here today and sing happy birthday to... In the elevator, Alfred closets the bat suit. Bruce Wayne runs a shaver over three days of stubble, fixing his pressed white shirt. The transformation is complete. Bruce Wayne faces the doors. <sighs> you might want to try and smile, sir. Bruce shows his teeth, unconvincingly. The doors to the elevators open to the crowd. And finally, Bruce Wayne steps out. His smile says he didn't see it coming when they all yell, as he wades into the crowd. Bruce Wayne! Detective John Jones's car pulls up on the crunching gravel of the Colorado rail yards, pulling up next to a fueling station. He gets out, approaching a stack of fuel barrels. Pulling out a pen light, he shines it in the cracks. Detective Jones reaches between barrels and pulls out a jar, murky liquid, plant material, seaweed, shines his light into the cloudy water and spots something undulating inside, 
something alive. John Jones carries the jar back to his car, sliding in behind the wheel of the idle vehicle. He pulls a plastic bag and a pair of tweezers from the glove box and carefully unscrews the lid. He reaches into the water with his evidence tools and gingerly pulls out a creature, like a seahorse, only bigger, stranger, alien looking. As he leans in for a closer look, it coughs a mist of particulate matter that stings his hands. John drops the jar, wiping his hands, smearing the gritty oily uh, fluid. Uh, As he looks down at the uh, creature, his hands are smoky. He stares at his left hand, then his right, just as they burst into flames. Then his arm, his chest, his head. He's a ball of flames as he goes for the radio. Uh, uh, dispatch, cold 30, cold 30. But the handset already melted and the fire spreading. He's got to do something, so he morphs. Changing shape, a soldier, a little kid, a gorilla, a python, anything to try and put out the flames. Nothing works, however, as he reverts to his real shape. Not John Jones, the Denver PD detective, but Jean Jones, the Martian Manhunter, his true self. Massive, green, iron brow, red eyes, screaming in agony because he's become an inferno. He hits the gas, peeling out barely in control of the car, fire gushing out behind like contrails. He veers, clipping the fuel tanker. The fire catches, John Jones guns it through the wall of fire. Back at the party, Bruce Wayne is surrounded. Handshakes, birthday kisses, he's the life and soul. Maxwell Lord steps up with his gaggle of beauties to give Bruce a bear hug. Who knew you had so many friends? Oh, they're just here because I'm obscenely rich. <laughs> Hell, we both know without men like you and me to grease their wheels, most of these jokers be waiting tables at one of my restaurants. <laughs> Bruce nods to a long buffet table loaded with food, retro American style. Stacks of perfect hamburgers in perfect buns. I hear you did the catering. That's one of the many benefits of my little sideline business. Free dinner. Have you tried the crypto burgers? I don't eat food with names, Max. Planet Krypton's in every major city on the planet. Over a million served. The whole world can't be wrong. Back on the catered spread, men and women were loading their plates. Back at Planet Krypton, Barry Allen also ate like a horse. Wonder Woman's a bit of a blowhard, don't you think? And how come she gets all the credit for world peace? Yeah, I guess I played my part. Not you. I was thinking of Green Lantern. And Aquaman? Now he's hot. And don't even get me started on Superman. I mean, come on. Warm smiles were exchanged between them, like you only see with people who've been in love for a long time. Back on the TV screen, a news broadcast is in progress. From Denver, Colorado, where we're told fires are currently raging out of control all over the city. Video footage of a burning car is shown. John Jones weaving through traffic at 90 miles per hour. He loses control, slamming into an overpass guardrail and blasts right through. The car catches air, flips, and crashes. It lands on the roof of a fuel depot at the Denver International Airport. A fireball spits out to hit a tanker. The tanker blows, sending flames sky high. How far is Denver from here? Oh, come on, Barry. One uninterrupted lunch. 600 miles? I'll be back before the coffee's cold. Promise. You can't save the whole world, you know? Not the whole world, just the little part with you in it. Iris sighs, <sighs> resigned, but reluctantly nods. Go. Barry leans in for a quick kiss, then twists the ring he wears on his right hand. A streak of red fabric bursts out of the ring, and in less than a heartbeat, Barry's standing there decked out in his trademark uniform. Red and gold, muscles and speed. He is the Flash. Magnificent. 
Back in a sec. The Scarlet Speedster zigzags and weaves through towns, along rail lines, across prairies, up mountains, and through the streets of Denver, all until the Flash skids to a stop on the tarmac. Firefighters surround the burning tanker, hitting it with foam from dozens of hoses. Smoke and flames fill the air. Allow me, boys. And he's off, running circles around the fire, faster and faster, creating a vortex that sucks the air out of the center. One of the firefighters, however, is standing too close and is sucked into the vortex, flung 50 feet into the air. The flash pulls up, satisfied with his work. Then he hears the screams. Barry looks up to see the firefighter plummeting. My bad. I got it. I got it. He streaks to a fire truck, grabbing a fire blanket and circles it into position under the dropping fireman. Ready? And? And? A figure streaks across the sky, picking the man out of midair. Red, white, and blue. Gold. Iconic. Wonder Woman drops out of the smoke with the fireman in her arms, landing gently and putting him back on his feet. Flash stares, mouth hanging open, awestruck. Whoa, you're the, it's, yeah, wow, I mean, you're a... Wonder Woman. That's, man, I was just, hi, I'm... The Flash? Yes. You've heard of me, really. Wow, I'm a huge fan, and you know, I gotta say, your pictures do not do you justice. The Flash sticks out his hand like an idiot. Wonder Woman stares at it. I totally had that, by the way. In the distance, flying low in the sky, a flying ball of fire. What the hell is that? It streaks right above their heads, trailing flames right for the main terminal. Wait here, I'll run it down. Wait here? Wonder Woman would then take off running, the flash catching up easily. Is that the best you've got? Her feet then lift off the ground, leaving her flying past. Hey, flying's no fair. Barry kicks it up a notch as the fireball careens around and under the planes parked at their skyports. People gawking from the inside of the airport. The Flash speeds over to a massive water standpipe and starts to crank the valve wheel. But use your rope thingy. Lasso of truth. Whatever, just yank him over here. She unhitches her lasso and throws a loop. Bullseye. She yanks the fireball over to the Flash, who opens the spout, and thousands of gallons of water shoot straight up, then rain down in the streets, right on top of the fire, through the cascade. There is a hulking figure. What is that thing? Help. Help me. The Flash looks around with a confused look on his face. You hear that? It's telepathic. Diana, please. Wonder Woman's eyes go wide as the figure calls for her name. It knows you? It's Jean Jones. Well, Martian Manhunter? Jean steps out of the thundering sheets of water, his eyes blazing red. His skin is charcoal and black. Isn't he supposed to be green? It would only be a moment before the Martian Manhunter bursts into flames again. Back at Wayne Manor, Bruce sits on a deep sofa, fawned over like a pasha. Maxwell Lord is next to him. Max sees something across the room. Oh my, my, my. Bruce turns to look, only to involuntarily rise to his feet. Because there, just entering the room, is Talia. Tall, exotic, haunted, from some other country, some other world almost. An achingly perfect beauty. Maxwell rises next to Bruce, whispering in his ear as every eye in the room turns to see. You know who that is? But Bruce isn't listening. He's speechless, his eyes riveted. That, my friend, is Talia al Ghul, daughter of Rosh, the demon head. Her dark almond eyes burn into Bruce. There's something between them, something powerful. You must remember, <laughs> it's almost a legend. Rosh fought the Batman and lost, and now he's gone, and here she is. Bruce was only watching, waiting. The look in his eyes is so intense, every head in the room turns to see what he sees. She was in love with the Batman, or so they say. Maxwell's eyes were equally intense, shifting from Bruce to Talia. He's drilling deep into this moment. She betrayed her father for him, or so they say. There was then a trickle of blood down his nose. Talia continued her approach, a slow, stately, sexy walk across the room. The people part, 
opening a path straight for Bruce. And in return, he broke her heart. <laughs> or so they say. Bruce's eyes stayed connected. He was seeing. He was remembering as he flashed back to one year ago. The Batman with Talia in his arms. The beauty and the bat. Face to face, inches apart. Talia kisses him, and he kisses her, then pulls away. Talia, no, I can't. But my father, I've given you, beloved, everything. She is a well of desperation, doesn't want to let go. I can never give you what you want. This isn't goodbye. The Batman nods, touching her lips with his fingertips before backing away and disappearing into the darkness. Her eyes are filled with sorrow, then fury. Talia, right now, stands in front of Bruce. It's like they're both in a trance, drowning in each other. It looks like a kiss waiting to happen. And with a breathy whisper, Talia speaks. A birthday kiss, Mr. Wayne, for good luck. The room holds its breath as the two of them slowly begin to lean into each other only a mere inch apart before... Master Wayne? Bruce snaps out of it, like waking from a dream. Would you like to blow out your candles, or should I? Alfred holds out a birthday cake. As Bruce leans in to blow out its candles, Alfred also leans in to whisper to Bruce. Something needs your immediate attention, sir. The guests applaud and start a spontaneous rendition of Happy Birthday to You as Bruce Wayne stands, adjusting his tie. If you'll excuse me. He shoots a look at Maxwell, seeing the blood on his upper lip. Max, your nose is bleeding. Bruce would leave down a side hallway as Maxwell dabbed at his lip with a handkerchief. As Bruce and Alfred separated themselves from the guest, Alfred explains the situation. The system alarms. It's the Martian, John Johns. He's been attacked. How? Fire. Bruce stops in his tracks. Worry moves across his eyes. He glances back through the doorway to see Talia looking back at him. Party's over. Send everyone home. In New York City, there is a magnificent Art Deco building on the edge of Central Park. Inside one of its many bathrooms, there is the Martian Manhunter. His eyes closed, skin still blackened. He is submerged in Wonder Woman's ornate bathtub. How long can we leave him in there? All soggy. Wonder Woman throws open the doors to the terrace. Outside, a figure silhouetted against the lights of Manhattan's skyline strides towards them. Blue, red, and gold. Superman. He steps through the door and takes Wonder Woman's hand into his. Two old friends. Diana. Cal. It's been too long. Always. Flash. It's hard not to be awed by the legend up close. Superman. Sir, nice to meet you. What happened here? Okay, best guess, magnesium. It doesn't mix well with oxygen. Very explosive combination. Now, could it be a compound bonded with his skin cells? A uh, serum? But if you ask me, I'd say it was microtechnology. Nanotech. I'd have to get a sample from my lab. Superman. Cal. The flash spins, then remembers. It's okay, he's got telepathy. You knew that. Superman kneels to the side of the tub, John's red eyes looking up through the water imploring. He reaches a massive hand out into the air towards Superman, and it bursts into flames. He resubmerges, leaving a wisp of smoke behind. They knew my weakness. My race's weakness. Fire. It destroyed my world. My family. My life. Who? Who knew? It was a secret I thought was unassailable. Who? How did they get to you? A note. I followed it. There was a creature. Strange. Like seaweed. A sea creature? It spat venom. I don't know. The rest was fire and pain. As Jean sinks back to the bottom of the bathtub, Superman and Wonder Woman step back out to the terrace under the stars. Could it have been accidental? Just the wrong place, wrong time? No. It looks like an attack to me. 
Premeditated. Did you know his weakness? No, but someone did. And he was struck in his alter identity, Cal. Yes, that I really don't like. Back in the bathroom, the Flash stares out at the two gods, inches apart. From there, it looks like romance. You see that? The two of them. Was there something? You know, have they ever... My wife would have a field day with... Oh, oh, shoot, Iris. A sea creature spitting fire. Doesn't make sense. You know where I'll have to go. Be careful. He won't like the insinuation. From what I've heard, he doesn't like anything. Suddenly, the flash appears between them. Sorry, don't mean to interrupt, but Iris, my wife, I'm supposed to get back, and uh, will you be alright without me for a bit? I'm sure we'll manage. And with a crooked smile, Flash vibrates so fast, he disappears into the floor. Gone. The fast way out. By Hera. He's... He is indeed. In Lower Manhattan, there is a construction site, plastered with banners reading, Another Luxury Lord Enterprises Construction. Units starting at 1 million, available summer 2024. This high-rise building towers over the Hudson, 30 stories tall. It's unfinished, except for the top three floors. They're walled in floor and ceiling glass. A weak light inside, a darkened room, circular. Walls lined with old TVs. 1970s era, black and white, early color. Consoles stacked to the ceiling, hundreds of them. And on each one, a child's face. All boys, anywhere from 6 to 13 years old. Flickering images, no sound, but they're all talking to the camera. Interview subjects, some giggling, some stoic, some were crying. And under each image, numbers. 1971 to 1983, 1971 to 1979, 1971 to 1981, 1971 to 1977, and a single word, deceased. William Hartwick, Glenn Burke, Tom Parnell, Carl Bader. Maxwell Lord is standing in the center of the room, looking at these faces, naming their names. He's no longer smiling at Gregarious, dark and sad now. He latches onto one face. Jonah Wilkes. He places his fingertips against the screen, looking into this 12-year-old's videotape. Are we ready, Jonah? The little boy is smiling with bright, hopeful eyes. Back at a simple, unassuming house in a rundown, blue-collared neighborhood, tucked away between warehouses, Barry is back in his cop's blue suit, walking to the kitchen where he finds Iris, reading a magazine, leaning on a counter. Honey, I'm sorry. How dare you go out and save the world? She smiles. Barry, I knew what I was getting into when I married you. She gives him a kiss, Barry holding on to it for as long as he could. So, guess who I met today? Superman. Oh, guy's amazing. Classy. Oh, and you know the Martian Manhunter? Big green guy. Works out west. And anyone else? Oh, yeah. I guess Wonder Woman was there. Hmm. Barely noticed. Uh Uh-huh. So? She's fine, I guess. If you like women with muscles and magical lassos. Shut it! They laugh, embracing again for another kiss. Anything to eat? I'm starving. Barry crosses to two industrial-sized fridges, throwing open both sets of doors. And at super speed, he pulls out enough food for ten and begins preparing, making an unholy mess. Barry, I just cleaned up! She throws a radish at him. He flicks his wrist, catching it easily only to put it on his sandwich. Out! Go play with Wally. Wally's here already? Damn, time moves so fast these days. The Allen's garage has been converted into a den. A ping pong table in the center. Barry stops as he enters the space, smiling. A ping pong ball is bouncing across the net. Back, forth, back, forth. Over and over and over. Seemingly all by itself. Barry reaches out and grabs at the air, coming up with a 17-year-old kid. Wally West, Barry's nephew. Embarrassing. You caught me playing with myself. Barry pinches Wally's cheek like he's a little kid, which would be irritating even if he wasn't 17. Wally, did you go and get faster since last summer? I think you did. 
Wally swats him away and in less than a blink is across his uncle at the ping pong table. You want to play? Hell yes. I'll kick your creaky a double S. You can K-I-double-S my a double S is what you can do. The game is on. Paddles up. They serve and they can't seem to help themselves. Faster and faster until not even the ball can be seen anymore. Just the click thwack of the ball on the paddle. Two sets of hands in a blur. Then, Wally tosses in another ball. Then, so does Barry. Three balls. Then four. Five. All pinging and ponging over the net. Barry smiling. Having fun as through the door and into the kitchen, Iris smiles and shakes her head. Boys will be boys. Later, Barry is standing with his hands on his hips. Clearly, his nephew kicked his a double S. So, ping pong is not your game. Yeah, yeah, next time, Hotshot. Yeah, listen, I need you to do something for me. You're good with computers, right? I know my way around. Well, good, because I need you to do some research. Dig up whatever you can on nanotechnology. I want to know who's into it. Companies, people, military, civilians, and cutting edge, the secret stuff. You'll have to dig deep. And this is just us, okay? I don't want Ann Iris worrying. Oh, and make it quick, will you? Hey, quick as how we roll. Off the coast of Santorini, Superman hits the Aegean like a bullet, plunging himself deep into the depths of the sea. As he plunges deeper, there is submerged volcanic rock breathtaking sea caves. Superman kicks his way through the phosphorescent kelp forests to Poseidonus. At the bottom of a deep sea trench, simmering with the glow of anglerfish and gigantic sea jellies, Superman bullets for Orion's palace, towering, otherworldly, awe-inspiring, through the massive coral gates and into the Great Hall. And there, seated on his throne, is Aquaman. He looks up with fierce eyes. What is it this time? Back at the Batcave, Batman has multiple views on his brother eye screen. Aquaman and Superman in Poseidonis. Wonder Woman and John Jones in New York. He leans in, Alfred behind him. Fire. It took me years to uncover his weakness. Could someone else be watching, sir? Maybe. But who? Another screen, this one monitoring the Dark Knight himself, deep within the Batcave. <laughs> Great minds think alike, Bruce. Maxwell Lord, seated in front of his own jumbo screen, watching, just like Batman. Oof, today, the look in his eyes, he wanted you so bad, I could taste it. My God, did we make him sweat. Whatever that was... Whatever you were pulling, it was reckless, Maxwell. We could have been exposed. You give him too much credit, Talia. I give him nothing. <sighs> Trust me. There's no way he could see what's coming. Phase one, initiate. There's no way. In the downtown streets of Gotham, the high whine of a motorcycle can be heard. A Kawasaki ZX at max speed. A little gritty biker tails two motorcycle cops. Blowing right between them, he pops a wheelie and flips them off before gunning it away. The cops hit their sirens and give chase. The chase leads down a deserted back street when suddenly the cops are surrounded. It's an entire motorcycle gang, all massive choppers. One cop goes for his radio. Not a good idea. The gang leader is huge, dwarfing his bike. He grabs the cop's arm and twists him right off his bike, sending the cop to the ground. Another biker clamps a hook onto the collar of the other cop's jacket. As the cop looks back, he sees the other end is attached to a cinder block that a third biker calmly drops. The cop is yanked off his bike and sent to the ground. Gliding above is a dark figure, the silhouette of a bat. World peace. Why can't Gotham get the message? The motorcycle gang leaves, dragging the pair of cops along the street behind them. Grins and gunning engines. They don't see Batman on the railing of an overpass, waiting. As they approach, he swings down on a grappling line, boots first. With a kick to each face, two bikers are downed, sending them sprawling to the pavement. 
He lands in a crouch position, unclipping two batons and drives them into the spokes of the next two bikes, careening them into the air violently. Batman is able to pull the first cop to safety and comes up to see the last three bikes all wielding large guns. He pulls his cape around him as they open fire, round after round after round, a hot metal hailstorm until their guns are empty. But they aren't done yet. The gang leader pulls out a grenade launcher and shoots a direct hit at the Cape Crusader, blowing Batman back 30 feet into the air. He lands, rolls, and is up. Relentless. Batman looks at his cape, hundreds of bullets embedded into the black surface. Damn, this was a brand new cape. Batman digs into his utility belt, pulling out two batarangs, which he is quick to throw forward with violent precision. Two more bikers down, leaving just the gang leader huge and snarling. Batman strides forward calmly, the leader picking up his dropped chopper to heave it overhead, ready to hurl hundreds of pounds of metal right at Batman. A hook line from Batman's grappling gun loops a street lamp, swings back around and connects with the chopper's chassis. Just as the gang leader heaves the bike, the cable pulls Batman up and out of the way. He swings to the end of the line, and a punch-kick combination spins the monstrous gang leader right into the path of his own bike. Lights out. Sirens blare in the distance, an easy night's work for Batman until the whine of the Kawasaki engine. The runt makes a run for it. Batman fires his grapple, yanking the little bike out from underneath him. The runt tumbles, gets up, and takes off on foot, disappearing around a corner. Back in the throne room of Aquaman, Superman stands before the King of the Seven Seas. You dare to come here and accuse me? No, Aquaman. I came here to- Do not call me that. Aquaman. The air breather's name. It's demeaning. Juvenile. I mean, Superman. Wonder Woman. Who comes up with these? King Arthur, then. I know how you feel about our planet's land dwellers. Our planet? Our planet? Last I checked, I control three-fourths of the Earth's surface. This is my planet, and they treat it like a toilet. They aren't perfect, Arthur. Yes. Time and again, I have risen to their defense, and this... He flexes his left hand. It's unusual. A prosthetic made completely of water. This is what I got in return. A permanent reminder of their cruelty. I have given my pound of flesh, Superman. They are your problem, not mine. Respectfully, your highness, this isn't about them. Aquaman stews, tenses, then nods tersely. The Martian. Bring him to me. I'll see what I see. I'm asking you to come up, Arthur. We're asking. The princess? Superman nods. Aquaman doesn't like it, but... For her. Back in Gotham, the runt biker is at a dead end, slamming through the doors of the old movie palace. Batman is gaining on him. The runt drives over the candy counter, ducking down to cower and pant. A black gloved hand reaches over and yanks him up by the shirt. He's face to face with the Batman. The runt wriggles and slips out of his shirt, dashing right into the theater where a movie plays for a half-packed audience, all wearing 3D glasses. Batman is almost invisible as he tails the runt down a side aisle into the backstage area, a dark corridor behind the screen, a flickering light from the movie, the runt scrambling over boxes, throwing them into Batman's path. He disappears into the darkness. Batman scans. His bat ears pick up jagged breathing. Scared, strangled whimpers. Oh, oh God. God, God, no, no, please. A sudden series of mechanical clicks and whirs, metal on metal. And from out of the darkness, behind the boxes, an orb of glowing red light. Batman narrows his eyes when a hunk of metal slams into him hard. He crashes to the floor, shaking it off when he hears. Omac Alpha activated. Target acquired. Attack mode initiated. Batman's head snaps up and he is face to face with Omac Alpha. 
gleaming metallic blue steel. A single glowing red eye in the center of its forehead. But it's a quick look because a burst of laser energy guns out of its eye. Batman dives and rolls as a stack of boxes vaporizes. Batman stands with a handful of bat grenades. He sends them out quickly. Five contact grenades stick to Omak's steel shell. And Batman covers himself with his cape as the explosion shreds the screen. The audience screams. Popcorn flies. The chandelier sways. Backstage, the smoke clears. Omak Alpha in the center of it with not a single dent on it. The machine grabs Batman with its massive claws, lifts him overhead, and tosses him through the tattered screen into the audience. He wipes out a row of seats, and the crowd starts to panic. They scramble as the Omak begins a slow rise out of the movie screen. Batman fires a grappling line up to the balcony and zips up. But the Omak is faster. It flies right at him, catching him by the throat, driving him into the wall. It clamps onto his neck, squeezing. Batman struggles, beating against the metal uselessly. From out of the steel arm, a pincer emerges. Metal prods grip the edge of Batman's mask, peeling it back to reveal <sighs> Bruce Wayne. Target neutralized. Target Terminate. The one glowing red eye sends the image of a helpless Batman right into Maxwell Lord's control room. Maxwell, staring into Bruce Wayne's face, 30 feet above the ground, into his eye. Target neutralized. Terminate. Terminate. Stop it, Max! Our deal was not for a death sentence. No, 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 you're right. I wouldn't do that. On the screen, Batman is struggling less and less, on the verge of losing consciousness. Max! I just wanted you to see how easy it is to take everything from him. His most precious secret revealed. So easy. Test complete. Disengage and reconfigure. Batman drops out of view onto the floor of the balcony. The hysterical crowd racing out of the lobby as the OMAC hovers into view. It begins to lurch to list. It starts to come apart, chunks of it dropping to the ground, disintegrating, revealing the runt cocooned inside. As the last of the Omak falls away from his body, he staggers out, dazed, bewildered. A massive white moon sits atop the Atlantic as Superman blasts out from the water. With Aquaman riding the backs of a pair of bottlenose dolphins harnessed like racehorses. The two are on a straight path to Wonder Woman's conservatory. Underwater, Aquaman examines Jean. Finding nothing, he climbs out of the pool, instantly dry. Preposterous! A sea creature spitting fire? Not fire. A substance. A fluid. And what? Put itself in a jar? Just waiting to attack? It's ridiculous, this whole thing! Arthur, please. No one is accusing your subjects. We thought you might shed some light. Aquaman nods, pacified by the princess. He nods to Jean. I'm sorry. Being upworld... Puts me on edge. Suddenly, the flash materializes, vibrating right through the door, already talking. So, yeah, I was thinking, if I'm right, we're dealing with a nanotech attack. How did... He stops, noticing Aquaman. He's impressed all over again. Hey, hey, wow, uh, Aquaman. You're, uh, Aquaman. Flash, please. Not Aquaman. It's King Arthur around us. Sorry, your highness. I'm, uh, Flash. The Flash holds out his hand and Aquaman takes it. Barry looks to Superman with a wide grin on his face. You could also call me Scarlet Speedster. Some do. <sighs> back at the Batcave, Batman has his shattered cow pulled back, his bat suit peeled around his waist. His left shoulder was heavily bandaged, watching the replay of the fight. Brother, I review from 1023. Reviewing 10.23. The image resets. It's grainy and dim, hard to see. The Omak is coming apart, falling to scrap and ash. 
the runt biker emerging, disoriented. Freeze. Enhance. The brother eye camera zooms in frame by frame. Batman leans forward, trying to make sense of what he's seeing. What is that? Brother eye, go to audio 946, enhance. 9446, enhancing audio. Omac Alpha activated. Target acquired. Attack mode initiated. Hold. Omac Alpha. Omac? The frozen image. The killer machine staring down at Batman with its single glowing eye. Switch command. Access references to OMAC or OMAC Alpha. Files related to OMAC, anything... The screen goes black. Then just a red eye-shaped icon right in the center. Access denied. What? Access to OMAC files denied. Says who? OMAC files denied to unauthorized access. Unauthorized? Reset to default settings. Access OMAC files. Access denied. Batman goes to the keyboard, furiously typing in code. Shutdown and reboot command denied. There is no fault in the system, creator. No fault in the system. Stand by. The screen suddenly goes into digital hyperdrive. It blinks and flashes. Millions of lines of code whiz by. It crashes, then blinks back on. What a message. A threat. A disaster. You don't control it anymore. New York City. The Empire State Building lights on in offices all the way up. On the 49th floor is where Stewart and Associates' architectural firm stands. The owner, John Stewart, is locking the front door. He makes his way through the deserted offices, past drafting tables and scale models of impressive projects, all the way to the corner office. He locks the door from the inside and presses a remote button. An industrial metal shutters drop down over the windows and the door. John then pulls a gold chain from under his collar, tugging it off his neck. As he coils it into his palm, it transforms into a green lantern power ring. He slips it on his finger, clenches his fist, and suddenly a cavity in space-time opens before him, and inside, a green lantern glows. The Oan power battery. He puts his fist against it. In brightest day, in blackest night, let no evil escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power, green lantern's light. The ring began to glow, its energy streaking up his arm, his chest, his whole body. And there he is, the Green Lantern. Black and green, hardened muscles, pure power. He leans over a set of plans, architectural drawings of a playground marked How Jordan Memorial Park. He narrows his eyes. Projecting his imagination through the ring, and the drawings become three-dimensional, rising from the page. He studies it, the swings beginning to move, the seesaw going up and down. Then a child appears, two inches tall, green, laughing. Then another, and another. Virtual playtime. The Green Lantern smiles. Wonder Woman's Conservatory. There's a mosquito hovering high above the pool. Below, four superheroes standing. Jean floating. Diana, I've got to get back. I've been dry too long. But this is no ordinary bug. It's metallic, man-made, a mosquito bot. A faint mechanical buzz emits from it as it lowers slower and slower. I'm sorry I couldn't be of more help. I appreciate the attempt. Thank you. They clasp forearms, like warriors do. Flash notices Aquaman's hand, his left hand. Whoa, is that water? You've got a hand made out of water. Can I touch it? Aquaman (sighs) sighs, holding out his hand, and Flash shakes it. Wow, feels like a damp hand. uh, What does it do? Anything cool? It's a hand. The faint buzzing again as the bug lands on Aquaman's exposed neck. Its metal stinger extends, and it jabs its needle nose deep into Aquaman's skin. Aquaman crushes it with a slap to his neck, flinging the bloodsucker away in disgust. 
dirty air-breathing bug. John Stewart's office. Green Lantern watches his creations play. One of the little green kids reaches for the monkey bars but can't reach. Green Lantern adjusts them down a few inches and she jumps on easily. He leans over his plans, erases, makes the correction with his drafting pencil, then sticks it in his mouth and chews on the end of it. Suddenly he recoils. Something tastes funny. And when he pulls his pencil out, we see his whole tongue has turned black and it's spreading down his throat. His eyes dart and twitch so fast they blur into a smear of black and brown. Now an intense white noise erupts in his ears, searing his brain. As he grabs the sides of his head, the playground below him distorts, turning wild. No longer are children playing. Grotesque green shapes grow and grow, filling the room, smashing everything in sight, and Green Lantern's eyes wither in their sockets. Back at Wonder Woman's conservatory, Aquaman's eyes are no different. Mm -hmm. Wide open and staring. Something mm -hmm. isn't right. Nate, hey, your majesty, mm -hmm. why don't you take mm -hmm. Mr. Johns back to your place? Mm -hmm. It's gotta be sitting in the shallow end. Aquaman mm -hmm. backs away from the edge of the pool, staring mm -hmm. into the water, cold sweat dripping. Hey, you okay? You don't look so good. Mm -hmm. Arthur, what is it? It's fear. Mm -hmm. Aquaman is suddenly consumed mm -hmm. by fear. The water. The, the water. He waves his arms in front of him, like he's trying to dispel a vision of something horrible. His eyes lock onto his hand. His left hand. The hand that's made of water. He claws at it, pulls at it, and removes it, throwing it so it slides across the floor. Terrified, he backs away against the wall, crumpling to the ground. Jean, get inside his head. Jean closes his red eyes, concentrating. It's difficult. I see. Aquaman squeezes his eyes shut, the king of Atlantis whimpering as Wonder Woman kneels by his side. Fear. So much fear. It's water. He's afraid of water? Terrified. Can't be good for a fish. Wonder Woman is easily able to pick up Arthur in her arms, carrying him into an adjacent chamber away from the water. His breathing comes in ragged bursts as she sets him down and kneels at his side. Easy, Arthur. Aquaman holds onto Wonder Woman, gasping for air. Diana, my hand, the Martian, take it. Have him touch it. It may help. Diana nods and heads for Aquaman's enchanted water hand, lying discarded on the tile floor. Wonder Woman picks it up gingerly. It's limp and lifeless. No, that's creepy. She crosses the pool and kneels, holding out the hand. Jean reaches for the surface, a little fearful. His fingertips start to smoke as he lunges for the aqua hand, and as soon as he touches it, it covers his own hand in a layer of water, a barrier between his skin and the air. He was in the pool with Jean, right? Maybe he's reacted to something in the water. Something Martian-y. Jean slowly emerges from the pool, his body enveloped in a rippling liquid. The fire's out. He's safe. Martian-y? They all head to the antechamber where Aquaman languishes. No, these are directed attacks. Specific. Designed. How long can he stay dry without, you know, turning into bait? I am in the room, you know. Aquaman coughs, not sounding good. Jean staying focused. We need to be thinking of a single source. Someone who... But Jean is suddenly distracted. He takes a step back like he's been punched. What, Jean? What is it? Can you hear it, Cal? Somewhere. A strong soul. Anguish. Something. Jean looks for the source out the window. There. He points across the skyline to the 49th floor of the Empire State Building. Tendrils of green light shoot out of the windows, wrap around the building, then recede. Green Lantern! And without second thought, Superman flies out the window. Gone. Wait up! The Batcave. A single word blinks over the brother eye screen. Watch. Multiple images. Aquaman prone trembling in Wonder Woman's arms. Jean Johns encased in his cocoon. 
the Empire State Building with its pulsing green light. Batman with intense eyes keys the console microphone. Alfred, I need the backup computers. Yes, sir. Which ones? All of them. He jabs the button, sinking back in his chair. Oh, Mac. Who the hell are you? Maxwell Lord sits in his sanctum, walls of TV screens, on every single one, the same little boy. How am I doing, Jonah? Hundreds of Jonah Wilkes smiles down on him, approval, and over the speakers we hear, I can't see. I can't see. I can't see. Green Lantern's eyes are opaque, darting around in their sockets. Six heroes now stand in Wonder Woman's conservatory on this fateful night. Most have seen better days. And inside my head, it's just noise, like a scream. I can't hold anything. I can't concentrate. I can't see. He drops his head into his hands. Yeah, there's gotta be a threat. Something tying the attacks together. Not geography. Not methodology. The effects are various. Fear? Could it be the Scarecrow? Out of Gotham? He's locked away. Arkham Asylum. Are we sure? I'll check. In a sudden streak of red, the Flash is gone. What about the Penguin? Arkham. Mr. Freeze? In the slab. The Joker? No, he's in Arkham too, along with Two-Face and Solomon Grundy. Could it be Lex? I put him in Stryker's Island myself. Poison Ivy's in... Parasite. What about Dr. Psycho? Or Murmur? In a gust of wind, the Flash is back. Yeah, nope, both in the slab. Arkham, Strikers. Everyone's accounted for. All locked down. Someone new, then. Someone smart. We need to think defensively. Who's next? Anyone know about the Batman? No, no, no. He won't be a target. They're attacking superheroes, and he's not. The others all look at him. Hmm? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, sure, he's a hero in the sense that he's heroic. But he's not super, per se. You know, I mean, he doesn't have any powers or anything like we do. He's just a guy with a grudge. Uh, okay, I'll shut up now. Thank God for small miracles. The Batcave. Batman and Alfred power up dozens of computers, row after row. Behind them, Brother Eye continues to monitor. It's attacking their strengths. Fire, water, willpower, turning them in on themselves. Just like... Just like you would have, sir? If, Alfred. Only ever if. Shouldn't you contact Superman, the others? Not until I find Omak. I started this. I'm going to stop it. He starts working on the keyboards. Back at Wonder Woman's conservatory, there are six heroes, three damaged, three feeling the threat. I feel like I got a target painted on my back. We should assume any of us is vulnerable. Anywhere. Not anywhere. The fortress? We'll be safe there. The fortress of solitude. We're going to the fortress of solitude. I've never taken anyone. No one knows. Pal, you don't have to say it. Your trust is your safety. Around the room, there is an implicit acknowledgement of trust, that his secret is safe with them. Ah, oh, man, the fortress of freaking solitude. I gotta tell Iris. Barry in Iris's house. Wally West sits in front of his computer, on assignment. His fingers are a blur on the keyboard. The images on the screen were by so fast they're barely visible when the Flash steps in. You're still up? You told me to hack in all these systems, which, by the way, highly illegal and something grown-ups really should discourage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any luck yet? Firewalls. All over the place. Nothing I can't handle. He's working and talking. Files open and close at near light speed. I found some old DOD and CIA files on something called the OMAC Project. Might be promising. I'm cycling through passcodes now. Keep looking. And fast. Trouble? <sighs> yeah. Wally vibrates into the speed force. 
disappears. The clothes in his suitcase fly into the air, and before they can land, he's standing there in his own uniform. A flash knockoff. A little baggy. Need some help? No, Wally, no. I don't want you in the suit. Not for any reason, okay? Yep. Get some coffee, keep working. Let me know as soon as you find anything. The Flash starts walking out of the guest bedroom. Where are you going? Keep a secret. Fortress of Solitude. No way! Oh yeah, and Wally, I mean it about the suit. Wally nods. Got it. Flash leaves the guest room and enters his own bedroom. Iris has the covers pulled up, sleeping beautifully. He sits on the edge of the bed, and she opens her eyes. Barry? Shh, don't wake up. Too late, you horses ass. Where are you going? Nowhere. Just a little situation. Nothing to worry about. We got it totally under control. Who's we? You know, everyone. Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern. Oh, you'd like him. Everybody. Iris sits up in bed. That's a lot of firepower. I should be worried, right? No, come on. Baby, I'm the Flash. What could possibly- No. You're Barry Allen. My husband. I know. And I love you. He gives her a kiss. A nice, long, in love for years kiss. Then pulls away and looks into her eyes. A question there. She nods and he starts to vibrate. Right there, in her arms. She holds on tight, her eyes closed, and slowly, he passes through Iris's body. <gasps> she gasps, feeling him inside her, all of her, inside her every molecule. And now he's behind her, his arms wrapped tight, holding her. She catches her breath, lets the vibrations drain from her whole body. She is glowing. Don't you ever tell anyone we do that. Flash kisses her on the neck and rolls out of bed. Wait, take this. She hands him her cell phone from the bedside table. Iris, come on. I don't have any pockets. It'll be all bulky. Just take it. Makes me feel like I can find you, wherever. He nods. If it will make her feel safe, he'll do anything. Don't do anything stupid. You can't save the whole world, you know? Not the whole world. Just the little part with you in it. He blows her a farewell kiss and is gone. Greenland and Dawn, a snow goose, its long neck straining in flight, a second, third, and then tens of thousands of geese, a huge flock migrating south. And right in the middle is Superman, harnessed into Wonder Woman's laureate, towing Green Lantern on a green hand glider projecting from his ring. Jean Jones is along for the ride. Wonder Woman flies from behind, holding Aquaman in her arms. Aquaman looks down at the rolling sea, fear in his eyes. Hundreds of feet below them on the craggy coast, a streak of red. The Flash, tiny and distant, waves his arms, then races to the next peak. Superman banks and swoops down, collecting Flash in his arms and flies onward in the snow. They are all refugees. Inside the Fortress of Solitude, the safest place on Earth. With Superman leading the way, they walk down a long, domed tunnel of ice. Wonder Woman supports Aquaman. Jean leads the all-but-blind Green Lantern. When they reach the end of the tunnel, Flash's eyes open in absolute awe. Holy... They've entered a vast atrium, hundreds and hundreds of feet high. The walls are lined with colossal statues carved out of icy walls. Towering figures of Jor-El and Laura-El, Superman's parents. Superman leads them to the edge of a great chasm thousands of feet deep. Below, on an ice shelf at the feet of the statues, stood an exact replica of the Kent family farmhouse. Wooden clapboard walls, gabled roof, even down to the picket fence and hard scrabbled front yard, his true home. He lifts Aquaman and steps over the edge descending gracefully to the family farm. Wow, he's homesick. Wonder Woman can't keep her eyes off the surprising view inside Superman's soul. Flash looks to the Amazon in her revealing outfit. Aren't you cold? Deep Space. The Brother Eye Satellite. It shifts manically, scanning the Earth. Multiple subjects acquire results. Negative. Scanning. 
On the monitor in Maxwell Lord's control room, code scrolls along the bottom of the screen. Images were by. Brother Eye, scanning the globe, trying to find the targets. Initiated cannot mode, searching. Negative. Targets out of range. Where'd you go? Hmm. Where are you? On the Bat computer screen, Brother Eye is scanning, but Batman's not watching. He's at the backup computers. Okay. Where are we? OMAC. Stands for One Man Army Corps. Secret Defense Department Program World War II. A deployment of super soldiers able to take on a whole brigade of Nazis. Alone. On one screen, a grainy photo. AGI. Encased in an armored bodysuit. Primitive. Cumbersome. Like something out of an old 50s sci-fi flick. Problem is, it doesn't work. So we're here. The 60s and 70s, they switched to PSYOPs. Mind control stuff. There's a list of names, deployments. All listed as MIA. They send these guys into the jungle. But none of them come out. All MIA. So they go to robotics. Down the line of monitor screens, there are other photos from other eras, schematics, designs, each one getting more and more advanced. Nanotechnologies, autonomous systems. Then in 99, the whole program went offline. Discontinued. Maybe. Maybe not. I recognize that one. On the last screen is the OMAC that attacked Batman. But what does OMAC have to do with Brother Eye, and why the attacks on the others? Before Alfred can answer, the Brother Eye image locks onto the Arctic, the entrance to the Fortress of Solitude, and begins zooming in. Multiple subjects acquire results. Positive. Scanning. No. No. Stay off the grid. Stay gone. Targets acquired. Multiple subjects. Superman, active. Wonder Woman, active. Damn it! Flash, active. Batman pounds Mars on the console Lantern, and he's active. already up and moving, Lantern, pushing active. a button that ignites Lantern. the roar of a jet engine from deep in the Batcave. He begins to run. Keep digging. A streak of graphite black takes over Gotham City as Batman bakes his bad plane into the late afternoon sun. There's a sonic boom and he's on the way to the Fortress of Solitude. Aquaman lies on the couch, his head in Wonder Woman's lap. Labored breathing, his skin flaky and gray. Green Lantern rocks back and forth in a wingback chair. Jean touches his water cocoon, causing it to ripple. Flash hugs himself against the cold, stamps his feet and rubs his hands, full of energy. This is nice. Not what I expected. You know, Fortress of Solitude and all that, but it's nice. Homey. I like it. Got anything to eat in the fridge? But Superman doesn't answer. He's preoccupied. No? Okay. That's okay. I'm fine. Hey, Jill, how you doing? You okay? No. All right. I got it. Everyone's all... I'll just shut up. No. Keep talking. It helps. Even if we hate to admit it. Okay. All right. Here's a question for you, John. How does that thing work? Your ring. I don't know. No, really. Talk to me. What do you do? You point it at something and think real hard? Something like that. Can I try it? It won't work for you. There's rules. It serves only the strongest will and the bravest heart. Oh, is that right? Wow, so, so that's you. On the whole planet out of eight and a half billion people. Wow, that's impressive. How'd you find it? Just unlucky, I guess. You don't like it? Because I love being fast. It's like... I don't know, when I'm really cooking, as fast as I can, it's almost, it's like everything in the universe just stops. It just hangs there. It's like a stillness. No wind, no noise. Right there in that little space between beats of the human heart. It's, uh, peace. The others are all listening now, picturing, feeling this small moment of grace. That's impressive too. That moment. Is that the speed of light? No, no, I can't go that fast. At least I don't think I can. Maybe? I've gotten close, but the speed barrier? I've got this feeling it's one way. You know, once you cross... Hey, Diana, can I try your lasso? Someone's coming. He looks skyward, x-raying through the earth. 
he sees Batman in the ice tunnel, walking alone. The Batman. Superman isn't the only one with eyes on him. The brother eye camera streams the vivid stark black against the white walls right to Maxwell Lord's control room. This is dangerous, Maxwell. All together in one place? What if they repair themselves? Join together. Would it be arrogant to say that even if they do, they can't stop me? It would, probably, right? Yes? One man against these gods? Brother I, access profile. Target, the Flash. On screen, Flash's secret profile. A subfile titled Associates. Two words. Iris Allen. Let's see what one man can do. Batman, covering his injuries with his cape. Six pairs of eyes on him like lasers. You're not safe here. How did you find us? Not here, not anywhere. Something's watching you. Us, right now. Impossible. No one on Earth knows. I found you, didn't I? Who? How? A satellite system, semi-autonomous. It's tracking you, hunting you. It knows your identities, your weaknesses, how to hit you, where to hit you, everything. Who is it? LexCorp. Someone at LexCorp? No. CIA? NSA? Rogue military? No. Who then? There must be someone we're missing. Someone we're not thinking of. Me. Everything that's happened, it's all me. What in the hell are you saying? The systems. It's mine. I built it. I deployed it. Brother I. Why? Why would you do that? What if? What if? What if you turned against us, against the world? What if someone controlled you, changed you? Preposterous! Is it? But you know us, you know we- I know what you're capable of. I know how powerful you are. And I know that no one on earth, no mortal, could ever control you. If You I... wanted to control us. To contain you, if necessary. We're not your enemy. Correct. And I didn't attack you. Each of them advance on Batman. He's surrounded by these powerhouses. Someone got in, stole your eye. Yes. They're using your files, your database. <sighs> yes. Who? I don't know. Who is it? Who? I don't know. Aquaman dives at Batman, furious. They did this? Turn me into this? His skin's gray, his eyes cloudy. He's weak, running out of time. Superman steps in front of Batman swallowing his anger as he tried to stay calm. How do we turn it off? I don't know. I've tried. Where is this thing? I don't know. Someone- Tell us. I don't know. I cloaked it. I hid its location even from myself. It's gone. It's Superman's turn to lose it. He lifts Batman off his feet and slams him against the wall. <laughs> How could you be so stupid? I thought you were nonviolent. A fist attached to a slim, powerful forearm connects viciously with Batman's <laughs> jaw, sending him staggering out of Superman's grasp to drop down to one knee. He is, but I'm not. Did she just hit him? Yeah, nice shot too. <laughs> Batman struggles to his feet. The others get a good look at him. His left shoulder, his right knee, high-tech braces on both. Whatever happened to him, it was bad. He is reluctant, but he has to admit it. Everything. It's called OMAC. Some rotten vestige of an old military program. Robotic attack vehicles, psyops, nanotech. Ah, I knew it. Someone hijacked it, updated it. There's a human component now, some sort of transformation. It hit me. One moment it was a man, then it was a machine. A killing machine. I threw everything I had at it, everything I had, but it owned me. But it spared you. Why? That's what I need to find out. As soon as you can, split up. No, we're stronger together. You think we're here by accident? We're here because it wants us here. I think you overestimate. Think about it, Clark. It used the attack on John as bait to bring Aquaman to the surface. Then it hit me as a distraction. And then Green Lantern and Aquaman at the same time. It knew I'd come to warn you. It's been one step ahead of us the whole time. You're wrong, Bruce. We're safe here. 
We've already got Jean back on his feet. And in a fishbowl. Look at him. It's playing with us. How do you know all of this? Because it's exactly how I would have done it. This stops them. He wears his guilt like a mask. When suddenly, there's music. A lo-fi hip-hop beat. The Flash remembers, pulling Iris's cell phone from his boot. No, sorry, that's me. I got it. Don't answer that. No, no, it's cool. Yeah, it's my wife. Uh, hey, honey. But it's not Iris. On his ear, a microfibril tendril snakes out of the phone and slides right into his head. A metallic probe burrows deep inside his cranium, past and around his ear canal and down into the base of his skull. A nasty-looking insect like nanobot spits out. Eight legs snap open and latch onto Flash's spinal cord with a sickening crunch. And then it begins to vibrate. Flash begins to vibrate along with the microscopic intruder, dropping the phone to the floor. Uh, uh, this isn't this gonna, be, gonna good. be good. Flash? The shakes kick in big time. He drops to his knees, looking up as he pleads. Help! Help! Hold him! Hold him! Full molecular speed, the threshold of the speed force. Wonder Woman reaches for him, but she's too late. He slips right through her arms and slides down into the icy floor. Gone. Antarctica. A colony of emperor penguins are in a panic, waddling madly away from the spot where the flash punches a hole in the surface of the ice, shooting out the opposite side of the planet. He tumbles out into the sky above the South Pole, arms and legs flailing, totally out of control. Thousands of feet up into the air, until gravity pulls him straight back down, the ground screams up to meet him. Oh, this is oh, gonna this leave a mark. mark. He hits the frozen tundra and disappears back up to the earth, headed the other way through. On the spot in the floor where the flash used to be, green lanterns in the dark. What happened? He'll pass through. Through what? The earth. Straight through and to the other side. At that speed, does he still have mass? Why? What goes up? Must come down. And there he was. Flash burst through the floor like a bolt of electricity, slicing right through the roof of the house. They're down the steps of the porch, all looking up at the ceiling of the cavern. How long can he keep it up? He'll stop at the center of gravity with a molten core. Wonder Woman is determined to not let that happen. She goes to her belt, unhooks the lasso of truth, and ties a loop. Will it hold? It was forged by the gods themselves. Tell me when. Superman trains his X-ray vision upward, getting a fix on Flash's position. Wait for it. Wait. Closer and closer, picking up speed. Wonder Woman twirls the lasso overhead. Ready? Aim. Hephaestus, don't fail me. Now. And she fires. Skyward, just as Flash appears through the roof, the lasso meets him, looping around his chest. Bullseye. But he's falling too fast to stop on a dime. Back into the roof of the house, with the lasso of truth trailing behind him. The rope tears through the house, ripping a path through the roof, the front porch, the steps, the front path, the yard. As Wonder Woman slows his fall, the laureate slips through her hands, smoke curling from her palms. Finally, her bald fists slam against the ground, holding firm. She's got him. One end in her hands, the other in the floor. Wonder Woman pulls, hand over hand, Superman helping, the rope jittering. Finally, she yanks the flash out of the earth, head first, then shoulders until he lies trembling on the floor of the fortress. Wrecked. Was it the phone? An electromagnetic pulse. No. I saw something enter his ear canal. There's something there. By his basal ganglia. Cal. Got it. Something nanoscopic. Vibrating. Told you guys it was nanotech. nanotech. As Superman continues to scan the Flash, John turns to scan Green Lantern. John, you have one too. Behind the visual cortex. There's bugs in all of us. Cal, your heat vision. Burn them out. It's too dangerous. John? I couldn't risk it. Risk it. My metabolism, metabolism will eat me alive. alive. 
The Flash was right. He was rapidly decaying, already becoming skin and bones. Green Lantern's eyes danced, uncertain. If I had my sight, I'll guide you. Be your eyes. I'll need to make surgical instruments. Microfibers. I don't know. Do it. Get him inside. Time down. Jean carries Flash into the house. Green Lantern following a hand on Jean's shoulder. Wonder Woman helps Aquaman inside. Superman turns to see Batman rising up his jump line. A black smear against the ice walls, headed for the surface. Once there, Batman crosses the ice to his bat plane. His injuries make him limp. Bruce! Batman stops in his tracks and turns as Superman approaches. Face to face. Chest to chest. The world's two most powerful men. I don't understand you. That you could do this. Even contemplate this. I don't have time for your scorn, Clark. And you can save the lecture. Batman turns his back, starting towards the bat plane again. The darkness in you. The paranoia. The rage. It's... it's too much. Finally, this time. It's too much. It's in you too, Clark. It's in everything. You be the Boy Scout, pretend everything's sunshine and light, but half of every day we live is lived at night. You've spent too many years in that cave. Maybe so, but if I didn't exist and there was just you in this world, you'd have to invent me. Superman shakes his head. He knew he'd never get through. The darkness. Such a lonely place to live. Now it's Superman's turn to walk away, leaving Batman alone in a swirl of wind and snow. In brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Inside the farmhouse, the Green Lantern tries to focus his mind, and four green microfibrous surgical probes with pincher ends are snaking out of his ring, right over the Flash's face. He's harnessed in Wonder Woman's lasso, strapped to the kitchen table, cross-eyed, watching the probes approach his still vibrating head. Uh, thinner, uh, thinner John, 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 you've got to think, think thinner. thinner. Superman passes through into the living room where Wonder Woman holds Aquaman, pressing a wet towel to his forehead. She looks up at the Man of Steel. I can't rouse him. He's in a coma. If he'll stay out, maybe we can hydrate him. Superman races back through the kitchen and outside. Easy. Easy. Green Lantern's probes enter Flash's brain. Through the nose. The ears. Jean Jones guides him with his Martian vision. Flash flinches, his eyes watering. I can't feel it. Another micrometer down. Good. Now, just to the left. <sighs> Your left or his left? Could be important. Could be important. important. Outside in the yard, Superman's blasting the ice in the front yard with his heat vision, creating a pool of water, a pond, big and deep enough to hold a man. Back in the kitchen, there is full concentration on three faces. You'll feel the vibrations. <sighs> it's all vibrations. You're right on it. Look, I don't want to pull the wrong thing. Yes, yeah, strongest, strongest will, bravest will, heart, strongest, strongest will, will, bravest will, bravest heart. Now... With one quick motion, Green Lantern retracts the probe and he's got it. The little intruder. Flash instantly stops shaking. He settles, lies there panting. The others all lean in, watching the Flash with anticipation, until his eyes flutter and open, his parched lips parting. I love toast. Jean and John look at each other. Maybe it wasn't exactly what they were expecting to hear. Pretty much any toast. Rye, pumpernickel. I like the San Francisco-style sourdough. Oh, and don't even start with English muffin. Nature's perfect food. Oh God, I pulled out his brain. Wonder Woman steps in, carrying Aquaman in her arms. No, no, it's the lariat. It's making him tell the truth. Just unwind him. She bangs out the door, headed for the yard as Flash continues to talk. I'm not even sure about the crumpet. I mean, is that even toast? Jean unwinds the rope and Flash stops on a dime, managing to sit up looking around unsteady. Well, that was awful. Who's next? He then fell back onto the table, frail and skeletal. Inside the bat plane, Batman controls his supersonic jet, keying into the radio. Alfred. Yes, Master Bruce? I need you to try to access the Brother Eye system. It's dark, sir. Nothing. Keep trying. Let me know if you get back in. 
the farmhouse yard within the Fortress of Solitude. Wonder Woman wades into the water up to her waist. She releases Aquaman. He floats, lifeless, until his gills flutter open and hungrily drink in the water. This should keep him stable. If he wakes up, the shock could kill him. As Jean speaks, he scans the Atlantean's brain for nanites. It's there, agitating the amygdala, the fear center. Green Lantern will have to go in. Superman looks over the Martian, scanning him with his own X-ray vision. You're clean, Jean. I don't see anything in your brain. It must be external with me, bonded with my dermis. From the front porch, the Flash leans heavily against the railing, barely standing. You know what you need? A full body facial, like a scrub. Or no, like a laser dermabrasion. A little like cosmetic surgery, you know? Could work. I'd have to remove the water shield. I don't know. I'm gonna get my little brain bug back to my lab, break it down, check its component parts. Flash tries to run, but instead he sags onto the front steps, spent. You'll need your strength back first. I'll take you. Cal? Batman's eye? If it's up there, I'll find it. And tear it to pieces. There's something happening here. A moment. A team forming. Working together. A moment acknowledged. Go. Deep in the Batcave, Alfred works the computer. Brother I, respond. Respond. He waits and waits. Then the screen blinks, a red icon, in the shape of a stylized eye, blank pupil staring down. Respond, affirmative. Master Bruce, we're back online. Hatch me in. Go. Brother I, query, is there a metahuman profile on Creator, on the Batman? Affirmative. Did you create a file on me, Alfred? Of course not, sir. Well, whoever did, that's who's behind the attacks. That's OMAC. Access metahuman profiles. Subject, the Batman. Request affirmative. Access E. There it is. Batman's secret profile. Stats and data running the length of the screen. Age, height, weight, skills, strengths. It's all here. Access weakness subfile. Enhance. What does it say? Alfred, what does it say? Just one word, sir. What is it? And the one word written there, looming 30 feet high, Batman's weakness. Love. Batman takes this in. A series of memories hitting him. A series of women. All in the arms of the Batman. All kissing him passionately. Julie Madison. Silver St. Cloud. Vicky Vale. Catwoman. Poison Ivy. Talia. Batman's eyes were covered by a visor, but he was remembering. A time in Talia's Gotham apartment bedroom six months ago. Batman and Talia, across from one another. She's powerful, sexual. He's wary, calm. Hello, beloved. She walks to him in total control. I thought we already did this. For the last time... She's now just inches away from him. One kiss. In payment. For my father. I want one kiss. Then tell me you don't still love me. Her cat-like eyes search his. He resists her charms. I can't let you behind the mask, Talia. Never. What's behind the mask isn't what I want. She begins to lower her eyes suggestively. I want... This. She takes one of his hands and pulls off his glove. Batman's skin white against the black. And this? The other glove. She raises his hand to her lips, kisses his palm with wet kisses, wraps his arms around her waist. And this? She places her hand on his chest, over his heart. Because I know it's mine. And Talia devours him, a kiss like an animal. A kiss almost brutal in passion. Batman pulls away, his lip bleeding. He licks the blood away, throwing his cape around her body, enveloping her with his darkness. And as they fall back onto her bed, the kiss repeats itself. 
the image playing over and over in Batman's mind. Closer and closer, lips, teeth, blood, until he realizes a tiny glint of metal, a nanoscopic homing device in the beat of blood, and Batman's tongue taking it inside his body. Back to the present, Batman now understands everything. Talia. The Batplane banks sharply, a change in flight plan, blowing a hole in the clouds. Against the blackness of space is a black satellite floating along the Earth's orbit. A red, gold, and blue streak races towards it. Superman arrives, inspecting the satellite. He turns it in his hands and sees the symbol, AT&T. Not the right one. Not Brother Eye. He streaks off to the next target, and the next. Hundreds of miles below, a child's birthday party is in record attendance at a Planet Krypton restaurant. Balloons, streamers, overweight dads in flash costumes, moms as Wonder Woman. Which is why nobody pays attention to the real Flash and Wonder Woman at a corner booth. Their table was filled with crypto burger platters, one after the other. Why here? The Flash holds up just one of the enormous burgers on his plate. Calories. Lots and lots of calories. Back at the Fortress of Solitude, Aquaman is submerged in the ice pool mid-surgery. A web of green tendrils circle his head. The Martian is underwater with him. He's shape-shifted, his forearms immobilizing the patient. Aquaman starts to come to, his eyes filled with panic. He opens his mouth to scream, just as Green Lantern retracts the surgical filaments. Success. Breathe. Breathe. Aquaman gulps in water, visibly calmer than before. Then he sinks into the pool, spent. Jean gives him a moment. Take your hand back, Arthur. He reaches for Aquaman, touches his arm, and his life-saving water skin recedes, transforms, and coalesces back into Aquaman's hand. It's time to fight fire with fire. Are you ready, John? Green Lantern was at the edge of the pool. Eyes closed, pure concentration, pure effort. He's projecting a large concave disc from his ring. A reflective surface, a green mirror. Yeah, I think I got it. Now. With his Martian vision, Jean fires a beam of pure energy right at Green Lantern. It hits the mirror, refracts, and millions of lasers shoot back at him. They blast into his body, blowing out the flames and leaving behind a hardened charcoal shell, like the petrified man. A moment passes, and the shell begins to crack, cracking and cracking until it falls away, leaving the Martian Manhunter standing there, green, intact, and free. Now you, Green Lantern. I can't. My powers of concentration is too... I can't go in on myself. Aquaman rises from the water, getting out to stand next to Jean. I think I can. He crosses to Green Lantern, putting a hand on his shoulder. Green Lantern's eyes whiz in his sockets. You'll have to trust me, John. John nods, and Aquaman places his water hand over Green Lantern's face gently. Breathe in. Green Lantern hesitates a beat. Then takes a big gulp of air and inhales Aquaman's water hand. It disappears into his lungs and starts to drown him. John gasps, <gasps> unable to breathe. He shudders and drops to his knees. He's drowning. Trust me, John. Aquaman takes Green Lantern down onto his back, his body bucking and fighting for his life. Then he stops as he falls unconscious. As he lies there, water begins to pour out of his ears, forming a puddle around his head. Aquaman reaches down, touches the water, and forms it into his hand once again. He opens his watery fist to see he's holding a tiny metallic bug in his palm. Green Lantern's eyes snap open and he pulls in oxygen. His lungs clear. His mind clears. And his eyes... I can see! I can see! He looks up at Aquaman, kneeling over him. Thank you, Arthur. 
Aquaman shakes his head with a smile. <laughs> Call me Aquaman. In the crowded rush hour streets of New York City walks Talia, pushing through the crowds to the construction barricades outside Maxwell's building, pushing through a plywood barrier. Across the street, way up on a rooftop, Batman watches her enter the exposed elevator and start up for the top three floors. He fires a dart from his grapnel gun, a jump line snaking across the street. Inside Maxwell Lord's control room, Batman's image is repeated on Brother Eye's screen. So predictable, so predictable. What a nice reunion this will be. Back at the Planet Krypton restaurant, Flash is digging in, rejuvenating and regaining his strength. Want some? Wonder Woman shakes her head. Guess that's how you fit so nicely in the costume. I've never understood the mortal male's need to objectify the female. You ever look in a mirror? Because uh, if it's a problem, you might want to add a cape to the costume. Or, I don't know, pants? Wonder Woman has to smile. He's feeling better. Flash wipes his chin with his napkin when he hears the ding of the door opening. Uncle Barry, that junk will kill you. Wally West approaches the table, a large folder of papers in his hands. I'm sorry, am I interrupting? Is this a date? Seriously, is it? Because Aunt Iris, I'm just saying. Flash's face suddenly became almost as red as his suit. It's not a date, for Christ's sakes. What are you doing here? How did you find us? The Speed Force, duh. I always know where you are. But just a sec. Oh my god. You're Wonder Woman. The real Wonder Woman. Wally's eyes roll down his shirt front. He smiles a crooked late teenage smile. Wonder Woman looks to Flash. My nephew, Wally, he's, uh, you know. He is indeed. And Wally, don't objectify, okay? What have you got? Wally drops his folder onto the table, sliding into the booth next to his uncle. Well, you wanted to know Nano. Who's who, right? Who isn't is the better question. Wayne Enterprises, Solitron, Ambicorp. They're all into the little stuff, but... Wally reaches over, grabbing a french fry from Flash's plate. First of all, I gotta tell you, the government needs to get better encryption technology, because I was in there pretty deep, and I'm just a kid with an iPhone. But I found something interesting, part of this OMAC project. This catches both Flash and Wonder Woman's attention, both of them leaning in. Oh, you guys are gonna love this. Back in Maxwell Lord's private residence, three floors connected by grand stairways, walls of windows with shades drawn. It's dark, lit by streaks of neon, odd sculptures and objects just out of the gloom filled with Max's collection of expensive things, all in a jumble, like toys a kid's gotten tired of. Sports cars, motorcycles, enormous TVs that play grainy static. Above it all, Batman can hear his creation. Wonder Woman located, active. The Flash located, active. Batman moves quietly up to the control room where he sees Talia seated at the controls. Three lantern located active. A black gloved hand rests on her shoulder. She doesn't turn around. She knows who it is. Batman turns her chair, facing him now, and there's a bitterness in her eyes. Passion. My beloved. Batman pulls her to her feet, close. It's almost an embrace. Betrayed by a kiss. I remember many kisses, Mr. Wayne. The kiss that revealed your secrets, that opened your cave, that let me steal your little all-seeing eye. That, that was just the last kiss. You planted a tracking chip on me, broke in, stole my surveillance. You are your father's daughter after all. My father is dead! She slams her hands into his chest. Then, just like before, she places her palms over his heart. I said once that I wanted this. No. Now I want your identity, your reputation, everything you care about. The only things you care about, Bruce. 
I know who you are. <laughs> Why, Talia? Because you threw me away. My love you made worthless. My sacrifice. He yanks her back to face the screen, with its split-screen images of all the other heroes making her look. Because of me? You do this? To them? He sees her falter. Turn her eyes away, just for a moment. Wait. This isn't right. This isn't you. There's someone else. Don't underestimate me. The screen goes black. Then, the red-eye icon. OMAC Project Red Level Elevated. Code Red. Stand by. OMAC Project. This can't be you. What is this? Initiate OMAC Protocols. Phase 1. Stand by. Damn it, Talia! Who is OMAC? <laughs> Planet Krypton. At the table with Wonder Woman and the Flash, Wally West has his folder open. Okay, so we know it's this one-man Army Corps thing. Highest grade nanotechnologies, robotics, all that stuff. But in the 70s, they took a spin through serious mind control. Check this out. He slides a stack of papers onto the table. Names. Hundreds and hundreds of names. Babies. Bunches of them. It became all about genetics. Chemical alterations, radiation, pharmaceuticals, who knows what. But they trained these kids from day one. Tried to raise a homegrown battalion of freaks. Supposed to be able to control the enemy with just the power of their minds, but... On the list, one column, names, another column, birth dates, ID numbers, and the final column with one word repeated over and over down the page. Deceased. Cardiac arrest, hemorrhaging, organ failure, mostly their brains turn the jelly. Oh my god. Humanity's capacity to inflict cruelty. Few years ago, the whole thing went offline. The OMAC project just disappeared. Wonder Woman picks up the paper, scanning over the list. And all the children? They all died? Yeah. He takes the list from her and turns to a center page. Except one. In the long line of deceased, there's a gap. One birth date that doesn't have a death date. That name is circled. Jonah Wilkes. Yeah, it didn't ring a bell for me either, so... He drops the last of his research, photos. The first shows a bunch of kids, lined up in rows. Faces from Maxwell Video Archives. Next photo was of the same group, only smaller. The next had even fewer kids. It's like class photos. Glad I missed that class. In each one, Wally has circled a single boy. Dark hair, penetrating eyes. Jonah Wilkes, slightly crooked smile. I ran this kid's face through a forensic program to see what he'd look like today. Each sheet added a few years. Jonah Wilkes grows older and older before their eyes, becoming more and more familiar. This guy look familiar to you? He lays the last photo next to a copy of Fortune magazine. The caption reading, Fortune's most fortunate son. Great Zeus! And the cover photo showing the smiling face of... Maxwell Lord. Maxwell Lord's control room, where the man himself now steps out of the shadows. Hello, Bruce. Maxwell Lord, face to face with the Batman. Cool as cool can be. He's flanked by three armed guards. The bikers from before, the runt at the center. You. You're Omac. Yes. One man, the last of my kind, the sole survivor. He takes one step closer to Batman. Do you know your evolutionary theory, Bruce? I'm sure you must. Nature's relentless push towards perfection. What are you doing, Max? What I was born to do. I'm completing the OMAC project. Brother I, phase one, command, go. OMAC project initiated. 
Phase one, go. You're gonna like this. The monitor lights up with scenes from around the world. Capitals, seats of power, boardrooms, and in each one, transformations. Power players, people from Bruce Wayne's birthday party, all becoming Omax one after the other. Recognize them, Bruce? Our friends? The Houses of Parliament, London. A right honorable gentleman transforms, his body contorting as the Omax shell encases him. He rises, hovering over the House of Commons. The Tokyo Stock Exchange. A Japanese floor trader contorts and rises before being joined by another and another. The best the world has to offer. A corporate boardroom. A CEO turned OMAC hums and drifts over the conference table. The power players. The captains of finance. New York City. A limo's windows shatter as a high-class OMAC grows in the rear seat. Military. Media. An aircraft carrier. The bridge onto the deck explodes as sailors point and scream, having nowhere to run. What once took millennia, I can now do in minutes. Seconds. All skipped 10,000 generations to become perfected. All because I said it should be so. Look what one man can do. Batman looks to Talia, her eyes wide, staring at the screen at the ensuing worldwide chaos. I... I didn't know. It was Talia, Bruce. Your weakness? Under all that black, it turns out you do have a heart. So with one kiss, she got her revenge and I got Brother Eye. Batman takes a step towards Max, and three high-powered semi-automatics are leveled at his chest. With a click, the rounds are chambered, causing Batman to stop. Really? I couldn't have done it without you. So you're what now, Max? God? No, no. These are the gods. Metahuman scan. All subjects. He points to the screen. Brother Eye switching to the images of the other superhero. Jean Jones, Green Lantern, and Aquaman in the Fortress of Solitude recovering from their ordeal. The ones we worship and trust. Those who fell to Earth from other worlds. Those who rose from the seas with their brave hearts and strong wills. At the space station, Superman still hunting for Brother Eye's satellite. And their absurd powers, their absurd vows to protect and bring peace. Planet Krypton, Wonder Woman, Flash, and Wally West hunched over their papers, putting two and two together. <laughs> but they're false gods, aren't they? Weak gods. Imperfect. We know that, Bruce, you and I, because we know they can be beaten. How they can be beaten. By one man. You haven't beaten them, Max. Slow them down, maybe. But they'll stop you. I'm betting they're gonna want to save you first. From what? You? Brother Eye, activate OMAC Beta. Target creator. Max! No! Don't! Sequence initiated. Activate. Not from me. And before Batman's eyes, the runt biker transforms. His head snaps back as his body is taken over by the OMAC, dormant within. The other bikers recoil in horror as tendrils shoot out of this new OMAC and enter the bodies of the other two, infecting them. And they transform too. From then. Three OMACs, hovering in midair right behind Maxwell Lord, glowing, humming, deadly. Happy birthday, Bruce. The Fortress of Solitude. Denver PD Detective John Jones. Blue suit and tie. Stands with Aquaman and Green Lantern in the middle of the ice cavern. His face, his body, slowly begin to morph into his true form. John Jones. Getting his power back. 
Jean concentrates, and his body is racked with pain. His head snaps back, and for just a second, he is Batman, in agony. He lets out a scream to match the scream coming from Maxwell Lloyd's control room, where Batman is in the grips of all three Omax, pinchers around his arms, his legs, his body, his ribs popping as his howl of anguish carries to outer space where Superman's head snaps to look down at the earth far below. He gets a pinpoint and takes off so fast that space itself ripples around him, the scream echoing to the Fortress of Solitude where the distorted Batman reverts to John Jones, his eyes wide. The Batman, in torment, lead us to him. I don't know if I can fly yet. You can and you will. We're back, John. No more fear. In the control room, Batman is losing consciousness, the life squeezed out of him. Max! Don't! This isn't what I wanted! Not what you wanted, hmm. The things we didn't want. You know what I didn't want? I didn't want to wake up every morning with my brains oozing out of my nose. But you're right. Command interrupt. Hold. Disengage. The Omac Betas stop, loosen their grips, and Batman drops to his knees, sucking in the air around him. What do you want? Uh. Well, I guess I'm a perfectionist at heart, Bruce. I want a world evolved. Evolved to a point where children don't lose their parents. As Maxwell speaks, Batman's hand inches towards his utility belt. Where friends don't die and no one's alone. <laughs> same as you, I suppose. We're not the same. No? Who was it that spent hours and years figuring out how to kill all his friends? You? Or me? I never... Oh, come on now, Bruce. You loaded the gun. I just pulled the trigger. Batman's hand opens and a shaft bomb drops. It hits the floor and the room fills with a confetti of metallic glitter, blinding the Omax sensors. Re-engage! But they're lost in the shaft. Batman's first thought is Talia. He pulls her to a safe corner, then yanks two limpet grenades and makes a run from the computer. He has to take it out. But before he can set the charges, one of the Omax clears. He takes a swing with its deadly pincher. Batman dives out of the way, but the second Omac is on him. It rams him into a wall with a sickening thud. <laughs> he lands next to a cowering Talia. Forgive me. The third Omac lifts Batman by the throat and flings him across the room into a steel pillar. Batman pulls himself up to one knee, broken. No way to win this one. And all three Omax get him at once. Pinchers around his skull, his neck, his chest. Talia tries to pull him free. Max, you kill him! Oh no, Talia. I don't want to kill him. Until they come for him, I just want him to scream. Batman's skull is in a vice grip, sweating, gasping. Grinding his teeth in a death grace, he's not going to give in to Max, not going to scream again. And a single drop of blood collecting on the nose piece of his mask. Three faces, Wonder Woman, The Flash, and Wally West. Three shocked faces, all turned towards the TV above the bar, tuned in to reporter Bethany Snow at the U.S. Capitol. There's a battle going on. Soldiers and cops trade fire with a dozen Omax on the Capitol steps. Blasts of red energy beams explode. Bodies are thrown all over the place. Forces are pinned down here at the Capitol. No one seems to know what these things are or where they came from. A car is blown up into the air, careening right for the reporter, and the screen goes black. That doesn't look good. Diana, Flash. The Batman needs us. Now. Flash turns to Wonder Woman. Wally hasn't heard. It's the Martian. What? What's the Martian? Wonder Woman's already up from the table, on the move. I'll go. Flash, find out what that's all about. What's happening? Where are you guys going? 
You stay. Not another word is said as Flash and Wonder Woman dash for the doors. Back in Maxwell Lord's control room, Batman's oh. arms are twisting in their sockets, <laughs> his mask cracking and splintering. Stay away! Don't come! Would you come? Really, Bruce? After what you did to them all? Don't! Go! The Arctic coastline. Aquaman's at a dead run. Straight for the top of an ice cliff at the end of the world. He hits the edge and launches himself, falling hundreds of feet straight down into the sea, where a killer whale rises out of the water. Aquaman lands on its back, and the whale dives, taking him down with him. Back in the control room, Batman hangs limp as a rag doll in the Omax grip, barely conscious. Uh, what a shame. Nope. Well, he was always going to be the easiest to take down. Max, you bastard. You've got to admire him, though. Oh, well. He goes to her, trying to lead her away from Batman. The costume. You should have it as a memento mori. The wall suddenly explodes in a shower of concrete and twisted rebar. It's Superman to the rescue. He charges into the Omax, catching one in the midsection, bending it double before landing next to the second, and with a metallic ring, the Omax topples. Superman goes for Batman, crumpled on the floor. When a powerful pulse of energy shoots out from the third Omax eye, hitting Superman in the back, driving him across the room. The Omax swore, all three hammering fists, clamping pinchers, but he's unfazed. They're gnats to him. He carries them on his back under the onslaught, kneeling by Batman to check for a pulse, his eyes slowly uh, open. It's a trap. Stay away. The Arctic Tundra, blank ice, all white until a giant green fist punches a 20-foot wide hole in the tundra and the Martian Manhunter jets through. He hits the air at full speed, Green Lantern right behind. They're on their way to the control room where Superman shields Batman with his cape. He doesn't see the biggest Omac rearing back with two deadly steel blades. Behind you! The Omac is ready to plunge the blades in deep before a golden rope snakes its way across the room, wrapping around the Omac's raised arms. I've got his back. Wonder Woman plants her feet and yanks the Omac into the control panel, sending sparks flying. It comes up firing energy bolts and submachine guns. Wonder Woman deflects them all with her bracelets right back into the body of the machine until it's blown apart. The next Omac manages to clamp a pincher on Wonder Woman, a move that proves to be fatal as she grabs its massive arm and yanks it clean out of its socket. She swings it like a baseball bat and drives the Omac's head right off its shoulder. Well, that's a design flaw. The last Omac swings killer blades like buzz saws, but she strides right into the teeth of the thing and unloads a devastating roundhouse. A spin kick, a barrage of left hooks and clobbering right hands. The Omac can't stand up to the beating. Down on one knee, it turns its eye up to her face, and it's Wonder Woman who cleans its clock. Barely out of breath, she turns on Maxwell Lord. Mr. Lord, your nose is bleeding. This causes him to pull a handkerchief, dabbing below his bloody nose with a calm, controlled smile. Yes, thank you. I'm afraid I'm prone. The Flash stands in the center of a red square in Kremlin, Moscow. In front of him, chaos. Omax in a firefight with Russian soldiers, people running and screaming. Here too. Damn. Back in the control room, three heroes are against one man and his infuriating smile. Well, you certainly made that look easy. Turn it off. Now. Yeah, uh, no. I don't think I could even if I wanted to, frankly. We're a little past that point. He laughs, and as he does, more blood oozes out of his nose, dotting the cloth he held there. We will stop you. Anything you throw at us. You know that, don't you, Jonah? This causes Maxwell's smile 
to vanish. What did you call me? Jonah. Jonah Wilkes, isn't it? What are you? Who? I, no, no, not Jonah. You don't use that name. You don't have the right to use that name. Jonah's dead, and there's only Max. Maxwell Lord. One man. Me. You don't. <laughs> Nobody. The angrier he gets, the more his nose begins to bleed, blood pouring now. But then his <sighs> anger goes <sighs> as quickly as it wait. can. Wait, 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 wait. No, it's okay. It's... I'm in... I'm inside. I knew I could. If I got him close enough... Yeah. I got him. It's okay. And now, he's suddenly calm. The smile comes back. I'm in. And out of nowhere, Wonder Woman is hit from behind. An annihilating blow. It smashes her face first into a wall. Sinks her to her knees. She turns back to see Superman transform utterly. His face twisted dark, his eyes filled with rage. Clark, what are you doing? There's a war raging inside the Man of Steel. Wonder Woman knows instantly. The OMAC project. Mind control. I'm making him see what I want him to see. Know what I want him to know. And right now, he knows, he just found out, that Lois Lane, his one love, his only love, has been murdered. Tortured and murdered. Superman breathes like a bull before he advances, like a monster, a killing machine. No, Max! No! It's too much. He stalks closer and closer. Wonder Woman, his prey. And the best part? Superman rushes her, grabs her, lifting her over his head. He thinks you did it. He hurls her through the hole in the floor and down to the lower level where she lands with a bone crushing smack. Superman slowly descends through the hole, pure menace as he lifts his fists again, ready to drive it down when a black shape lands on his back. It's Batman, two high voltage electrical cables in hand, Legs locked around Superman, he jams the cables against his temples. 100,000 volts of electricity surge through Superman's brain. He bucks and bellows, his eyes rolling white, and the lights flicker and go black. When the power comes back up, Superman stands, temples smoldering, face to face with Batman. It's not you I want. And with a swift backhand, he sends Batman up and through the ceiling, back to the upper level. It's her. He turns, and Wonder Woman's right on top of him, arms outstretched. She slams her Amazonian bracelets against Superman's ears. The concussion sends a shockwave so strong that it buckles support girders, tosses debris. A mini atom bomb. Superman grabs his ears in agony. Wonder Woman pounds a kick into his midsection. He buckles, flies backwards across the room, skits to a stop. Hal, fight it. It's not real. But he doesn't hear. He can't hear. There's a blast of heat vision. And another. And another. Wonder Woman dodges, gets behind him, and powers a kidney punch into his back, making him drop to his knees. She loops her lasso, trying to tie him up, but he gets a hand in and grabs the end. Tethered, he whip-slings her overhead and through the floor. Wonder Woman lands, and Superman begins to reel her in by her own rope, looks down through the hole and gets sliced across the neck by Wonder Woman's tiara, which she threw through the hole. He falls back, letting go, and the lasso retracts. Wonder Woman waits, ready for anything. But when nothing comes, she rises through the ceiling to the upper level where Superman is waiting. He hurls one of Maxwell's muscle cars right for her. Direct hit. It drives her back through the glass and steel wall out over Lower Manhattan. Down and down and down, hurtling to the crowded street below. 
Wonder Woman pulls herself free of the wrecked car, gets under it and stops the fall just feet shy of the pavement, using it to shield pedestrians from the deadly debris. Once they're all safe, she drops the shell of the car and comes up with the engine block in her hand, screams up the side of the building and slams hundreds of pounds of metal into Superman's face tossing him back and up into the control room where Maxwell looks on, smiling as Superman gets to his feet, watching Wonder Woman ascend, the two most powerful beings in the world facing off in a death match. Amazing. And they're on again. They fly straight into one another, a colossal mid-air collision. Superman goes low and comes up under Wonder Woman, hands around her neck. He blasts upwards right through the ceiling, driving her up and away. Talion kneels by Batman's lifeless body, helpless as Maxwell Lord watches on, blood streaming down his face, lips curled into a vicious grin. How am I doing, Jonah? Superman and Wonder Woman ascend into Earth's atmosphere. The Earth recedes below, fast. Superman's got Wonder Woman by the throat, driving her backwards, upwards. Their two faces inches apart, his eyes glow red. Beams of hot X-ray energy shoot out at close range. Wonder Woman manages to get her bracelets up and blocks the blast, deflecting it back into Superman's own face, causing him to lose his grip. It's her turn. She grabs Superman by the hair and heaves with everything she's got, flings him spinning head over heels right into the moon. There's a crash landing in a cloud of moon rock and dust, wiping out the famous American flag planted there. Wonder Woman remains, gazing at the moon, huge and distant. She knows he's coming, and there he is, a speck growing bigger, fast, blazing right for her, silhouetted against the moon. She takes off in Superman's direction like a rocket on a collision course, two interstellar bodies ready for impact. At the last second, Wonder Woman veers upwards, drops a loop of her lasso around Superman's neck and yanks him to a dead stop. She throws coil after coil around his body, pinning his arms. She pulls tighter and tighter, plants a knee in his back, bends him almost double, but it only enrages Superman. He works a hand free, grabs Wonder Woman's wrist and squeezes. If they weren't in outer space, her scream would reach miles as the bones break. She lets the lasso slip and Superman takes his shot. Both fists devastating. She jackknifes back into slow zero gravity rotations, unconscious. The lasso of truth trails out behind her, then suddenly goes taunt. Superman has the other end. He swings her in circles, faster and faster until she's a smear of colors at the end of her own rope. When Superman lets go, it's not a free fall. It's not like a bullet. It's supersonic, like a meteor. The burn of re-entry turns Wonder Woman into a fireball, streaking across the sky, down and right into the New York Harbor. Underwater, at the murky bottom of the Hudson River, Wonder Woman, lifeless in a deep crater. The swirl of silty water, alone, helpless, until a figure emerges from the darkness, green and gold, Aquaman. He creates an air bubble around her and puts his lips to hers, breathing, giving her the breath of life, forcing oxygen back into her battered lungs. Wonder Woman gasps for air, opening her eyes. Princess. One request. Anything. Slow Superman down. Aquaman nods, lifts his head and emits a cry in a language of sonic waves, and his subjects respond. Perch, carp, barracuda, eels, river creatures of all descriptions emerge from the murk. As the air bubble dissipates, two dolphins curl in and carry Wonder Woman away, one under each arm. Over the New York Harbor, Superman plummets to Earth, slicing into the river with barely even a ripple. He lands in the crater at the bottom of the Hudson, his maddened eyes searching for his prey. Instead, he finds a wall of hostile sea creatures. They come at him like scaly bullets. He's able to bat them away by the thousands. In the confusion of fish, he doesn't see Aquaman emerge, tried it raised. He slashes for Superman's chest. Three ugly tears across the S. 
Superman glares at Aquaman, death in his eyes. From above, the river explodes, sending Aquaman flying. Ruin trident still in hand, arms and legs spinning like mad before he slams into the Woolworth building and drops for the street below. Seconds before impact, a green net forms under him, catching him and bringing him safely down next to the Green Lantern and John Jones. We need to find Diana. The Martian scans with his mind, locating her. He points to the high rise on the riverbank. There. Wonder Woman, back in the control room, is bound and bleeding. Tierra gone, hair wet and wild. But she's back. Maxwell faces her, smiling. You were the only one I couldn't get to. Mind control. Such an insidious power. Not even Superman could take you out. Amazing. She goes for her lasso of truth, coils it around him and pulls him to her. Tell me how to turn this off. Oh, are we going to tell the truth now, Diana? How do I stop this? You want to know the truth? The truth is, you weren't there. None of you. Not one of you were there. Tell me! You weren't there for Tom Parnell or Carl Bader or Glenn Burke. Where were you for Billy Hardwick? Darius Woods? Hmm? This ends now. They were children, and they were dying, and you weren't there. Jonah Wilkes! Jonah Wilkes needed saving. Where were you? The whole building shakes and trembles. A wall crumbles and there he stands, water streaming off his back. Superman. He flies straight for Wonder Woman but slams into a green barrier. He looks forward to see he smacked into another Superman. Green, translucent, projected from Green Lantern's ring. An exact replica with all the might of the original. With a fist like a 10 megaton bomb, the Green Lantern pounds Superman square in the jaw and out of the building over Manhattan. It's Superman versus Green Superman as they duke it out in midair, fists flying like a super heavyweight title fight. Except every time Superman slugs his mirror image, the Green Superman grows bigger and bigger until the gargantuan projection is big enough to grab Superman in its fist and squeeze. Through the fingers, Superman sees Green Lantern standing on a ledge, directing the attacks. And with a blast from his super breath, he's able to collapse the whole side of the building, taking Green Lantern out in an avalanche of steel and glass. The Green Superman disappears as its creator blacks out. Back in the control room, Maxwell, still wrapped up, fights against the power of the Laureate. She yanks the rope, pulling him to his knees. Enough! You're right, it is enough. <laughs> Nobody likes a pity party. Blood drips from his nose onto his shirt. Here's the truth. There's only one way to stop this princess. Kill me. He looks at her with a sick grin, and Superman steps back in through the hole in the wall. Eyes gone black. Nothing left in them. Nothing recognizably human. A guttural howl builds as he lumbers for her. How? Hello? Superman stops and turns and sees his mother. Laura L. Beautiful. Otherworldly. It's the only way. To get me out of his mind to turn this off, you'll have to kill me. Superman's face softens. His mother moves around between him and Wonder Woman, holding her arms out. Kal-El, my son. But you won't, will you? You won't because you made a vow, a solemn pledge never to kill, never to take a human life. Wonder Woman knows he's right. At war with herself, she pulls the lasso around his neck like a noose. You want to. You want to so bad I can smell it on you. Like a perfume. Superman steps closer and closer, wanting to embrace his mother. But his eyes turn blood red and he screams in pure rage. He charges Laura L with the full force of his wrath. 
A devastating blow sends her crumpled body skittering across the floor. Her body twists and contorts, morphing into a wounded dog, then back into her real form. Jean Jones collapsed on the floor. You can't do it. Wonder Woman turns to see Superman blazing right for her. He hits her from behind. Arms around her neck, he pulls her up and up, rising. She still holds the lasso, the other end around Maxwell's neck, pulling tight. It would be so easy. Just a gentle tug. You know, you can't kill me. Maxwell's calm is unnerving, eerie. He knows she won't do it. And he's right. She lets the lasso slip from her fingers, letting it slacken and drop. Green Lantern, Jean Joes, and Aquaman watch. Superman with bare teeth is ready for the kill. And Wonder Woman has resigned to her death. Maxwell is triumphant. Where were you? Where were any of you when I needed you? In the last moment of his life, darkness envelops him from behind. A black cape. It engulfs him. And the last words Maxwell Lord hears on this earth. Right here. There's a sickening twist as Maxwell's neck breaks. Like a snapping of twigs. Like knuckles <clears throat> popping. No! And he drops dead. Wrapped in the shroud of Batman's cape. The color returns to Superman's eyes. He relaxes his grip and Wonder Woman falls to the floor in a heap right across from Batman who rises, pulling the cape off Maxwell's dead body. Straddling him, he looks down. What one man can do, Max. Batman, no, no. She's wrecked, beaten and bleeding. Superman descends, confused and bleeding as well. He sees Wonder Woman's crumpled form and tries to shake the dirt from his mind. Diana, what? He reaches for her, but she recoils in fear, crawling away from him. Superman can't figure it out, spotting Maxwell's dead body. No, what is this? Who did this? I did. You did what? What had to be done? Superman's finally able to shake the fog off, rising to his feet. This time, it's righteous anger. No, no! Th this isn't who we are. We never, never take a human life. It's unacceptable. Accept it. It's done. This makes you no better than him. Batman rushes Superman, getting in his face. You were killing her. Diana would be dead. What? Diana? Max was inside your mind. He turned you... you were... It was inhuman. Inhuman. Superman sees the burn marks, the blood, the others, their injuries. He knows it's true. All of it. My God, I, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. He takes off his cape, wraps it around Wonder Woman, touching her face. Diana, I... It wasn't you, Cal. It wasn't. She looks up at him, touches the wounds that she gave him, forgiving him. Superman looks up to Batman, the truth rushing in. Then you were right. It doesn't matter. It's over. But three words ring out in the silence. No, it's not. They all turn to the Brother Eye computer and Talia. Beloved? A network of cables enters her body, tendrils <gasps> lifting her up, pulling her into the computer, suspending her, embedding her. <gasps> Her body heaves and shakes as she changes, becoming metallic, robotic, not an OMAC, something else. She's become Brother I, and the voice that comes out is Maxwell Lord's. It's just the beginning. The, beginning. the screen behind them flashes to people, regular people, all over the world, in markets, restaurants, offices. You see what, what we have we done? Have done? Together. Together, the, the final, final evolution, evolution, the OMAC project, project completed, completed, the, the relentless, relentless pursuit of perfection. perfection. All of the regular people begin changing, morphing, rising, becoming OMACs. Wembley Stadium, London, a soccer midfielder transforms in front of 70,000 spectators, an inner city playground, 
a kid on a rusty swing transforms. And, and it, it will, will be perfect. perfect. No, no more war. war. No, no more conflict. conflict. No, no more, more death. death. Venice Beach, a girl in a bikini, plays volleyball before she transforms. Everyone, Everyone everywhere, everywhere thinking with one mind. One great mind. A Japanese nightclub, the DJ spinning record morphs. Mine. Maxwell Lord was just a mortal, mortal shell. shell. But now, Batman, you've, you've given, given me immortality. immortality. The entire world. Omax everywhere. How? How's he doing it? How is it everyone at once? How? You give them the one thing they all want. What everyone needs. Dinner. The restaurants. Planet Krypton. It was in the food. Maxwell Lord's special chef sauce. The most, the most innocuous, innocuous of delivery systems. systems. Over, Over a million, million served. served. Could it be? A million? One bite of the apple and we all lost Eden. Eden. Superman. Blow the computer. No, not with Talia. Destruct, Destruct protocols initiate. Metahuman elimination. elimination. Priority, Priority one. one. All OMAC engage. engage. And the screen goes black. Talia slumps forward in her harness of wires, then a single message blinks over and over. Commence. OMAC war. Six pair of eyes stare as Flash barrels into the room. Okay, I've been all over the place and they're everywhere. Every major city and it's growing. We're gonna need a massive response. He stops, taking in the devastation. The beaten heroes. The flashing message. Uh, what did I miss? If it's war he wants. By all the gods, we'll give him war. In the silence of outer space, the sleek black brother eye satellite waits, watching the gathering storm over New York City. Storm clouds along with the setting sun making them purple, orange, and blood red. On a rooftop, they're all here, all except Batman, gathered, waiting shoulder to shoulder for the battle they know is coming. They scan the skies over the harbor. Nothing. Metahuman elimination. That's us. We're the priority targets. They'll come here first. There's no time to clear the city, so watch your collateral. They can hit us, but we protect the population. At all costs. But they are the population. There are people inside those machines. This is gonna be tough. Tough is what we do. The others nod, taking a moment while they contemplate and consider. Is it just me, or is this kind of cool? I mean, all of us here, together, saving the world, you know? Yeah, anyway, it's always been kind of a dream of mine. Everyone stares forward, scanning the skies. Mine too. Yes. Same here. Absolutely. I confess. Their faces say it all. Shame Batman's not here. Inside Maxwell's control room, Batman works the computer, trying to break in and shut it down. Above him, Talia, tethered to the machine. Ah. Batman pounds the controls. He can't crack the system. He looks up and decides. He pulls the cables, yanks them, hacks at them. One by one, they fall away. All except for one, embedded in her heart. My beloved. Talia. I am... Sorry. So sorry. I, I... I just wanted you. So much. And for that... She looks down at her metallic hands. The price... I pay. Human tears leaked out of her machine eyes. They are dimming. The light's going out. Stay with me. I can feel it. The machine. They feed off the energy inside. Draining. He's losing her and he knows it. But she's got something to tell him. She grabs him, pulling him close. He's moving. Max... The mind of the machines. He's 
looking for a new host. It'll be an evolution. Something... Something greater than all the others. Look for... And the light is gone. She goes limp. Batman leans forward and kisses her, his lips of flesh, hers of metal. Enough charge to wake her, just for a moment. Beloved, I should have been. And the last cable snaps off, releasing her into Batman's arms. No, it's me. I should have been a better man. The Atlantic Ocean, a single OMAG gliding fast and low over the water. One joins it, and then another, and another, until there's an entire force of them, an OMAG swarm. The heroes remain on the rooftop, waiting. Well, they're taking their sweet time. How many will it be, do you think? We'll find out. Will six of us be enough? Seven. Wally West, dressed in his knockoff uniform like Flash's twin. Five sets of eyebrows raise. Wally? I thought you could use some help. Hey, Wonder Woman. No, uh-uh, no way. Oh, come on, Uncle Barry. I can do this. Green Lantern looks to Wonder Woman for an explanation. His nephew. Apparently he's fast. Good God. There's two of them? No way. Something happens to you, Iris would kill me. Go home. Please? Flash? We're short-handed. And Hartley at full strength. Their injuries are evident. Flash knows she's right. Yeah, okay. But hang back. No risks. Done. He begins making his introductions, pumping his hands wildly. Hey, how you doing? I'm Wally. Wally West. Uh, but you can call me Flash 2. Or Flash Jr. Maybe. I was thinking Kid Flash at first, but it seems a little, you know, Junior League, uh, whatever you guys come up with. Who makes these calls? Superman? You've got to be kidding. A grapple dart hits the water tower and Batman pulls himself onto the roof at the end of a zip line, staggering to a landing. It's moved. Max transferred the control to a new host. It'll be a single source, something directing all the others. And... Talia? Batman just shakes his head. What are we looking for? I'm not sure, but it'll be in one of those. He points at the horizon to a black speck, flying low over the water. It's moving fast, growing, expanding as it gets closer and closer, becoming a dark blue cloud of death, the Omax Swarm. Aquaman, you're the first line of defense. Got it. Aquaman leans forward, sends out a high-pitched sonar signal. The concentric sound waves travel to the New York Harbor and the Omax swarm. The signal hits the waves and the water erupts. Orcas glistening black and white. Dozens and dozens of them breach the surface. They shoot up into the air and snap their jaws onto the low-flying Omax, dragging the first wave down into the sea. Back on the rooftop, the Justice League stands for the first time, together and ready for anything. Wait for it. Boy, there's a lot of them. We can handle it. It'll be an evolution, Omac. The host, something bigger, badder than the rest. Something like that? Green Lantern's looking behind them at the Flash. Or at least what used to be the Flash, because he's now in the late stages of transforming into Omac Ultra, the deadliest Omac, twice the size of the others, its steel armor a bright, glistening red. Uncle Barry? A wall of laser energy blows the entire team off the roof. Superman's the first to hit the ground, digging up cement in front of the river wall. He's back up quickly enough to catch Wally, tumbling midair. Green Lantern snags Aquaman before he plows into the pavement. Batman, Wonder Woman, and Jean pull up. What happened? Planet Krypton. The burgers! I told him that stuff was junk. Omac Ultra is almost on them. The glow of his eye gleamed through the smoke. Beat back the swarm. I'll take this. 
Go! Aquaman leaps from the railing, diving into the water. Wally West speeds off on top of the water as the others hit the sky. Just as Omac Ultra blows a hole in the turf of Battery Park. Superman bullets straight up to meet Omac Ultra, landing two fists clean into its head, spitting the machine out of control. Its energy beam spits out wildly. It takes out the entire 31st floor of the MetLife building, sending glass and debris everywhere. Superman flies around behind it and clamps onto its back. Omac Ultra reaches behind and pulls Superman off, lifts him overhead, and rockets him down deep into the crater of concrete and asphalt. Stockbrokers run for their lives down Wall Street as a single Omac glides towards them. NYPD officers unload revolvers and shotguns, their bullets pinging off the metal. A guy in a suit stumbles, looking back as a tendril shoots out of the hovering Omac. It slips into his body, causing him to begin transformation until a giant green metal sledgehammer slams down on its shell, cracking it wide open. The guy inside scrambles back to his feet and runs, looking back at Green Lantern. He swings his ring's projection again to pulverize the other Omax. Its host drops to the streets. Atop the river, Wally West runs circles, throwing up a vortex of water and wind. It sucks Omax in, shooting them down to Aquaman on the back of an orca, directing his subjects. Giant octopuses sling their arms, dragging the machines down under. In the sky above Lower Manhattan, Superman and Omac Ultra are face to face over the city. Omac's red eye flashes, then fires, hitting Superman straight in the face. It should incinerate him, melt the skin off, but this is Superman. He claws his way upstream and clamps a hand over its eye. Lasers continue to shoot out beneath his finger. Superman digs in and rips the single eye out of the Olmac Ultra's head. The machine screams as Superman can see into its guts, but only for a second. The skin of the robot morphs closed, and a new eye takes the old one's place. Superman's caught off guard, the energy beam sending him pinwheeling backwards and through the glass walls of a downtown condo and right out the other side. Outside of a downtown church, Wonder Woman stands balanced on a church steeple. She takes incoming rounds from dozens of killer machines. She deflects them with her bracelets, ricocheting the energy beams back into the Omax, blasting their heads clean off. Outside of a Manhattan park, John Jones is surrounded on all sides. Ten Omax. Ten sets of killer razor blades. They charge, flying at him with blinding speed, their razors swinging. With only inches to spare, John vanishes. The power of invisibility. Their blades tear into one another and they fall in a clatter of ripped metal. Down the city streets, Supermac and Olmac Ultra are deep in battle, giving no quarter. Man versus machine. It seems to be an even matchup. Superman rips a lamppost out of the ground and swings for Omac Ultra. It impacts and just bends around the robot, dealing it no harm. The Omac grabs the post and whips Superman off the other end, slamming him a foot deep into the side of a building. It launches itself at Superman with its razor blade, swinging and missing, slicing a deep groove in the bricks like a hot knife through butter. Superman grabs its arm and forces the razor back on the giant machine. The point of the blade aimed directly at its heart. He's about to ram it home. Cal, no! Bruce, what are you doing? The Flash, he's inside, still alive. The Omac Ultra swings for Batman's head with its pincher hand until Superman grabs it, holding it in place, straining against the force of the machine. Superman scans it with his X-ray vision. Inside, he can see the Flash hooked up to the machine, the network of circuits buried inside his body. It's feeding off his life energy. That's why it's so much stronger than the others. Flash's eyes are shut. The pulse of his still beating heart is loud, driving the Omac. Get out of the way. You'll kill him. Not Flash, just the Omac. He'll revert. The Omac Ultra is still fighting. It clamps onto Superman's arm with his pincher, giving it a crushing squeeze. If he does, the control will just jump to another machine. We'd never find it. We'll lose the connection. 
Superman's losing his grip when John Jones lands, taking the pincher arm and driving it against the wall. Wonder Woman's next. She lassoed Omac Ultra's legs, holding it down. John, use your mind. See if you can revive him. The Martian places his palm on Almac Ultra, peering inside where Flash is still unconscious. Flash. 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 Wake, up. wake up. You must, you must wake, up. wake up. Nothing happens. Just the continued hum of his heartbeat. Uncle Barry! Wally. Wally. The Omax head swivels like it's looking for something until it finds Wally West, standing with the others. Wally, Wally. is that you? Yes! Yes! Flash, listen to me. You are the host. It's in you, directing the machines. See if you can control it. Shut it off! Inside Omac Ultra, Flash struggles, thrashes, fighting to stay awake. It's... I can feel it. It's something dark. That's so strong. It's Max. Fight it, Flash. Green Lantern and Aquaman join back with the team. The swarm. They're regrouping. We only got seconds. He throws up a wall of green light around them, a safety barrier. It's... It knows I'm awake. awake. It's searching. searching. Looking, Looking for another host. host. You have, you to, have kill to kill it. it. Kill me. No, no! Hold on to Max's mind, Flash. Don't let him go. You can do it. Please, Please. kill this thing. Here they come. The Omax swarm moves towards them by the hundreds. I'm losing him. I'm losing him. Strongest will, Flash. Strongest will. Bravest heart. Yeah, I know what I have to do. I'll be back in a sec. And he vibrates. Faster than he ever has. Rattling the bolts of the Omac. Faster and faster until he explodes out of the Omac shell and into a world where time stops. Literally, like the universe has hit the pause button. The raging battle freezes. Flying Omax in midair, superheroes in mid-attack. Smoke, debris, explosion. They all just stop. He's in the speed force, and it's just like Flash said. Peaceful. Quiet. A sudden, crushing silence. He takes a moment to look around at the hellish scene, then steps away. Slowly at first, then faster and faster until he's on his little suburban street. Kids are frozen on their sidewalk bikes, sprinkler water never hitting the grass. Flash skids to a halt in front of his house, stepping in the front door. Iris Allen's on the couch. News footage of the Omax war freeze-framed on the set. Her face is a mask of worry. The Flash, Barry Allen, her husband, sits gently next to her. Oh, baby, you look so worried. Yeah, don't be worried, okay? I don't want you to worry. He puts a hand to her still soft cheek, still warm. Yeah, I know you can't hear me, can't see me, but I had to see you to say. But he can't bring himself to say it. He presses his lips to her, holding on to her tightly. Here's the funny thing. You want to know what it is? Turns out I can save the whole world. I can't. And so that's what I'm going to do. The tears in his eyes roll down his face. The only things moving in the entire universe. Because you're in it. He touches her heart, and in her eyes a single tear pools in each one. Like he's gotten through. Somehow he's gotten through. He leaves for the front porch where Flash takes a last moment. He looks around at the evening falling on his little piece of the world frozen in time my god what a beautiful world and in this moment between beats of the human heart a warp in time and space grabs hold of him like an elastic band snapping him back to the city streets of lower manhattan where time starts again at full speed the omac war commences the justice league fends off fire from the omac army all gathered around omac ultra the machine is whole again Flash back inside. I hope this thing can move. See you guys later. 
Omac Ultra releases its grip on Superman, shakes off John Jones and slides out of Wonder Woman's lasso and takes off like a bat out of hell. Down the street, knocking Omax aside like bowling pins, right out over the river and into a world of speed. The Omac Ultra, shining red, moving at impossible speeds across the terrain of Earth, over oceans, mountains, prairies, faster and faster until the Flash actually runs out of the machine shell, pulling a trail of shattered Omec molecules behind him like a comet's tail. Faster and faster, around and around the entire world. Mountain ranges dissolve in front of him, cities collapse like they're made of colored water, pulling into a gleaming liquid road. Come on, Barry, faster! A road stretching straight into forever. He pushes and pushes, looking over to his side when suddenly... Whoa! Go back, Wally. You're going too fast! Not fast enough. He looks back at the molecular OMAC trail behind him, stretching for thousands and thousands of miles. Uncle Barry! What are you doing? The two fastest men on the planet, going faster than any man has ever gone, side by side. The Flash smiles at his nephew. Tag, you're it. And he gives it everything he's got, powering up, leaving Wally in his dust as he enters the very limit of speed. The light from every star in the universe streaking alongside him in a vast tunnel, stretching eons in front of him to a vanishing point. A vanishing point he's sprinting for. A pinprick of light that grows and grows and grows, closer and closer, rushing right for him. The speed barrier, a cosmic wall of light, shimmering, undulating, like liquid glass as large as the universe itself. And Flash doesn't hesitate. He slams into it at full force, full speed. And for a nanosecond, he slows. But the molecules of the OMAC are right behind him, recombining, reforming into the massive OMAC Ultra. The machine hits him square in the back and drives them both through the speed barrier, pulverizing all the light in the universe into a blast of shards that explode in every direction, becoming stars. Distant stars. All in one place. All silent. The Flash is gone. In the streets of New York, one by one, the Omegs start to come apart. Look. Disintegrating, their shells falling away, turning to dust. The human hosts inside dropping to the ground, bewildered. What happened? Wally West streaks up to join the others. He's ashen. He, he did it. He almost falls into Wonder Woman's arms, winded and helpless. He went through. He broke through. The others gather round him now. The speed barrier. Then he's... Gone. He's gone. There's a ripping sound, a tearing, a sundering from the sky. And out from a fold in space-time, something red appears. Something familiar. The Flash's uniform. Empty. It drifts down to them, borne on the currents of still air. Batman catches it in his arms where it drapes like a dead body, red against black, stark and startling. No. No. He drops to his knees. Superman kneeling next to him to put a hand on his shoulder. Wally, look at what he did. What he saved. Wally nods, holding it together. The whole world. Batman holds the last remains of Barry Allen, his face in anguish. Just look. Look at what one man can do. All over the city, Omac robots fall from the sky like rain and a bell tolls sad and mournful as we return to today the metropolis cathedral golden and colored stained glass light falls on a casket closed in front of the altar in the front pew the entire justice league each of them dressed in mourning black iris allen the widow trying to hold it together 
She leans for comfort into the strong shoulder of Wally West, the new Flash. That night at the cemetery, Batman carries his tribute, a single red rose, to Flash's graveside. He kneels, a long, heavy moment as he comes to grips with what he did. Godspeed, Flash. Barry Allen. Godspeed. And he lets the flower drop. The next day at a newspaper vending machine, the headline reads, World Peace Resumes. Below is a picture of the OMAC War. The subhead? Hero Alliance Possible? A pedestrian drops a quarter in the vending machine, right in front of Maxwell Lord's Planet Krypton restaurant. Boarded up, a sign in the window saying, closed. We're stronger together. We've proven our trust. We've earned this. The Fortress of Solitude's farmhouse. Everyone's assembled, making decisions. Big decisions about the future. My vote is yes. I'm with John. I'm in. I'd be honored. Wally? I don't know. This should be Uncle Barry. Not me. We want you with us. Flash. She's used to the name. She's given it to Wally. A gift. Okay. I'll try. Wonder Woman takes his gratitude with a gracious smile. Then count me in, too. She turns to Superman, who can barely meet her eyes. That you'd even have me after... Um, But my vote is yes. Yes. Now all eyes turn to Batman, standing apart from the others, alone among these heroes. No. And a little of the air goes out of the room. No. This isn't the time to go back to your cave, to work alone. It's not that. He looks down at the others, their strengths, their powers, at his own damaged body. I don't belong here with you, all of you. You have power. You have... I'm not the Batman. It's just the mask I wear. He's laying himself bare as he pulls back his mask. I'm Bruce Wayne, and I have one weakness... I'm human. Revealing his human face, Superman says what the entire room is thinking. No, Bruce. That's your strength. Our strength. He looks him in the eye, holding out his hand. And Batman, Bruce Wayne, takes it. A firm shake. A firm commitment. To the future. Wonder Woman takes his hand, too. Then Jean and the others would, too, all accept... Holy, what is that? Soups, is this a commsat like you got here? Because is that thing real? He's looking at Superman's old cabinet TV. It shows a satellite feed, a commsat hookup monitoring outer space. And descending on Earth is a creature. Freaky, alien, and looking mad as hell. It's got five tentacle legs and a vicious mouth of teeth. It's huge. It looks like a starfish. Yeah, the size of Rhode Island. Looks like Starro here is heading right for us. They all look around the room at one another, cautious smiles on each of their faces. Without a word, they gear up. The flash starts to vibrate, revving his engine. Green Lantern projects battle armor from his ring. Aquaman snaps his harpoon hand into place. Jean Jones pops metal spikes out all over his body. Batman pulls his cowl back on tight. Wonder Woman clamps her Amazonian bracelets. Superman clenches his fists and fills up his chest. Let's do it. Together. Launching themselves through outer space to battle Starro the Conqueror. Tiny against its intergalactic mass. But they're strong and determined. And we know with utter certainty that they'll keep us all safe because they are the Justice League. Justice League Mortal 
written by Kieran Mulroney and Michelle Mulroney. Adapted and directed by Matthew Dawson. Produced by Drew Barker and Dean Calkins. Edited by Matthew Dawson and Drew Barker. Voice talent provided by Crystal Storm as the narrator. Ray Stacanus as Batman. Matt Bradford as The Flash. Drew Barker as Superman. Bun Barian as Wonder Woman. Matthew Dawson as Aquaman. Alon Grange as Maxwell Lord. Gerald Hill as Martian Manhunter. Delvin Cox as Green Lantern. Tara as Talia Al Ghul. Dean Calkins as Wally West. Guama Hairstinell as Iris Allen. Rob Patrick as Alfred Pennyworth. Ezra Dion as The Biker. Adam Kornman as Flash Waiter. Melissa Oki as Lara L. And Lindsey Gray as Bethany Snow. This production is the effort of Dial Up Pictures and its volunteering associates. It is in no way affiliated with or representative of Warner Brothers or DC Comics and their characters. This project was created by the fans for the fans to show our appreciation towards this franchise. This project has been released for free. Thank you to everyone who helped bring this project to life. Dial Up Pictures will always be grateful for your time and dedication to Justice League Mortal. And that's exactly how it happened? Ollie, we've been talking about this for three hours. Of course that's how it happened. I know, I know, pretty bird. I just need to have a sound mind. You know, make sure these funds are going to adjust causes all. Well, have you at least considered revealing your identity to them? I mean, it would certainly put them at ease, knowing who's funding this Watchtower project of yours. Oh, I have, but frankly, the irony is just too good. <laughs> You're ridiculous sometimes. You know that? They'll know in time. I have a strong suspicion our paths will converge. One way or the other. <laughs>